Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Digital Today's podcast. I am Dave. I'm Ron. And Ron, we got episode 220 today, did you 220, say? 220, or the... We've split the area code so much, it's southeastern Ohio today. Southeastern Ohio. Southeastern Ohio. There's no really name city. So if you're from southeastern Ohio and you're going to yell at me because I didn't name your city, I'm sorry. But but that's where we are. Well, we know Dave Little's going to chime in with all capital letters, giving us some kind of griff about he's not from Cincinnati. He's in Columbus, and that's not southeastern Ohio. Okay. I just don't want to make him mad at us again. You know how he gets. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Right. He's anyway, a doctor. Never, 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 never make a doctor upset there, Gardner. No, no, we don't want to do that. Uh, <laughs> ways to get a hold of us. Uh, DigitalToDice.com is the website. 978-751-DICE is the text line. DigitalToDice at Yahoo.com is the email. And over on Facebook, Facebook.com slash groups slash DigitalToDice. Now, Ron, here in episode 220, we yes. are actually live on YouTube. Yes, we are. With a couple of very special guests uh, in the house. We have... Um, a big, big Jets fan, by the way, this guy. Yes. Here. Uh, Greg Berath. Greg, thanks for joining us here on the show. Uh, Dave, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. All right. He's also known as uh, Ogard62 on the Delphi forums, and he's got some fantastic football replays, which I'm now following very intently because he's playing one of my favorite seasons, 1976. So I'm going to go back and follow that. Um, and, and Jacket, he played the uh, opening day for the Buccaneers. And it was, I think it was 26 20. It was his game, and the actual score was 20 to nothing. So it was yeah. 26 nothing, and the actual was 20 to nothing. And I thought wow. that was pretty, pretty cool yeah. Yeah, for, for a, an opening day game. Uh, and not to uh, skip over this gentleman here, but from the Apple Football Club, we have Jeff. Jeff, thanks for coming on the show. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, what you do is amazing. And so it's a real privilege and honor. I'll take it. So now, where, where are you right now? You're on the road, right? We are in lovely Cooperstown, New York, for the second APA baseball tournament inside the uh, Hall of Fame here. That's We're awesome. Expanded to two days. It was a whirlwind day, a lot of incredible games. Uh, speaking of APA football, Joe Sweeney, Makojo, is yeah. showed here, and he did a lot of football utilities. Greg Barrett can tell you a lot about that, I'm sure. He's a legend in uh, APA and, and football particularly. Nice. Oh, fantastic. All righty, so we're going to have you guys on today, and we're going to talk, obviously, some Apple football, maybe some Apple you know, baseball things in general as well. Um, before we get going, though, we do have one question we ask all our guests, and Jeff, I'll start with you with this question. If you could go back in time and attend any sporting event whatsoever, even one you've already been to, what would you go back and watch again? I would go back to um, 1980 Steelers at Bucks. Because I was at that game, my dad ran a small paper in town, uh, north of Orlando, and we had press passes, and so I got to go down to the on the uh, sideline for the second half and take some photos. And I was like oh, wow. stand, standing right now. I hear this ball like hitting, and I turn around, and like Bradshaw and Harris are right there. I would love to go because no. I was nice. like completely awed. And I got to go. I, I stepped into the locker room, and I saw Dwight White naked, and I turned <laughs> right along. <laughs> <laughs> I would have had more guts to say, hey, man, good game. But me and yeah. Joe Dre- Green didn't offer you a Coke? Yeah, no. he throws jersey at you. <laughs> I think he was probably on the plane back home or something. <laughs> man, that's that's incredible. All right. That's fantastic. All righty. All right. So, Greg, what about you? If you could go back oh, in the man, time machine, that, that's what easy. That'd be a January 12th, 1969. I, I would love to have been there at Super Bowl three. Nice. Yeah. It's too All bad right. you're a Colt fan. You know, I, I <laughs> you know, I remember, uh, you know, I was just a little, just a little guy, you know, in '69. I don't, you know, six years old or whatever. And I remember my dad, man, he had so much action on that game. You know, he had so many bets on that game. And then, and, and my cousin too. And then when Namath made that guarantee on the Wednesday uh, before the game. My cousin said, the hell with it. I'm not even taking the points no more. I just take the Jets straight up. They both won a ton of money, man. Wow. Yeah, that would be the game I like to be be at, of course. We had one, uh, and who was it, Ron, that said that he was at the George Brett Pine Tar game. That's right. I forget who it was. And his uncle pulled him out early to beat traffic, and he never saw that. Oh, yeah. Okay. (laughs) Imagine being at that game and it's like, hey, boy, we made it home quick. And he's listening on the radio. He's like, what did we miss? He wanted to go back and finish that game live. Yeah. That's a tough one. 
I be- I believe there probably wasn't any speaking to that family member for years after um after that. Yeah, that was the uncle. He's like, we're gonna beat traffic. Let's go. And they left, and they they missed the whole. Time I, I remember that time. now. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of that was kind of one of the, one of the really sad ones that we've had on here. But anyway, all righty. So uh, we got some people in the chat room. Jeff, thanks for coming by. Thespian, thanks for coming by too. Patrick is stopping by as well. And Keith is in the house as well as a handful of other people. Feel free to chat. We will be taking questions in a little bit, by the way, um, for these gentlemen, either for them or for about Apple football or Apple in general. We'll do what we can to answer them. Uh, let's start with, with you, Jeff. Um, how did you get into tabletop gaming? What were some of the first games that you played? And then how did you get into Apple football? Sure, sure. Um like a lot of folks in the 70s you know war games were big avalon hill uh i was a big red baron fan because a friend of mine up in maine like played me the snoopy and the red baron single so i found that avalon hill game rick toffin's war and getting all those and my dad was a football guy so i found catico the photo football the one not with the electric one with like the bulb in it but the one where you'd like have an offense play a defense play put them in the envelope put it on the pins and you'd slide it off and see where the play went oh okay never heard of that one and then and then pay dirt of course the great one with you know the cowboys and the redskins on the on a cover and then of course street and smith came along and i watching that magical 78 season and just we saw a lot of the steeler games uh in central florida and, and bradshaw had just such poise you know and just a lot of incredible storylines that season and it was you know that came down to the street and smith ad um and in the version i saw the street and smith ad was kind of an uh, the stratomatic ad was kind of an illustration it didn't really show the product and so i i think i kind of confused it with one of those you know you remember all the betting you know the prognosticators had all those yeah. uh, ads and then the apple page actually looked like it was the product it, it replicated some of those big color brochures and so i was sold on apple because really and i'm not the only one i've cur- come to find out is that you know when you collected the tops cards i always thought wouldn't it be great to put them on oh the, sure you know and and a lot of other folks had the same idea uh, apparently so you know having the individual cards was just did they was- actually have a picture of a card in the ad yeah, yeah, they had the whole setup. If you look at the old uh, Apple uh, pages, and you can go to the Apple game site, they have an archive. Uh, we contributed a bunch, and a lot of folks right. did. The old, uh, you know, brochure would show usually the Super Bowl teams, like you know, Super Bowl eight, okay. Super Bowl nine, and and they'd walk you through. I mean, the, the, those brochures are legends. So. Ah, uh, maybe it was on Facebook today an ad for the baseball game from a uh, seventy three, and the uh, cards are Tom Seaver. And Rusty Staub, which Staub actually had a pretty good card for '73, uh, but 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 yeah, I figured that would be a much better way to to do that than I suppose than just the illustration of the quarterback or whatever that Strat might have had. What about you, Greg? What you got? What got you into gaming? Well, uh, my dad was a, was a big Apple guy, and uh, he he was uh, he played some of the football, but he was all baseball. You know, he was uh, pure. And he used to do replays. I wish, I wish, Ron, that I could. He used to write real small, and he'd have all those uh, those spiral notepads, and okay. he'd do all his replays on them. And I think, you know, over the years, my mom probably, you know, discarded them. You know, and roll it, the uh, eyes like, what yeah, are you doing? I, yeah, I wish yeah. I still had that. You know, because he he would be so into it, and. Uh, he replayed the uh, 61 season because he was oh, wow. a big, big Maris, you know, big, you know, baseball purist. And uh, right. so that's how I got into it. Okay. I used to go up to him. I used to tell the story. He'd have, he'd have that card table set up in the middle of the living room and he'd have it there for months and drive my mom nuts, you know. Oh, I bet it did. Which, nothing she could do about it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it, so, so. I would go up to him. I'd be like 12 years old. I'd go up to him. I'd say, you know, hey, Dick, can, you know, can I play? And he'd look at me and he'd put that big hand out like this and he'd say, son, this is not for you. This is serious. <laughs> That's interesting because the whole point of these games was to be advertised to those of us who were kids. Yeah, yeah. I know. He didn't get that memo, Ron. Ah. <laughs> 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 oh. So when did Apple football come out? 
I mean, Napa Baseball well, decelerated. 58, to- right, Jeff, was the first set. Oh, okay. Yeah. So really? really? Oh, yeah. wow, that's a long time ago. Yeah. And this is an original game by Sites. Now, Napa Baseball yeah. was a former national pastime, so this was Sites' first full. That's game. right. Oh, and Jeff is showing – Dick cites his card. As Hang on, let me let me solo you one. Hang on, let me um, solo you out on that. Yeah, and so we that's can take a the, look uh, at that. Yeah, this is from the reprint of National Pastime. That okay, we wow, that's baseball for the audio people. Brought that along. Yeah, it's it, Apple Football is his really. I consider the first of, of, of original Apple game. Sure. So fifty-eight then for all the NFL teams, and so Greg, did your dad play that as well, or was he strictly he, baseball? He played. He. I don't know if he had the fifty-eight season. Uh, he played football, but he didn't like the football game nearly like he did the baseball game because you know, there were some issues still, you know, back then with those with the 60s, you know, see Jeff knows. And uh, so I would play around with his football a little bit because he wouldn't let me touch the baseball. <laughs> <'cause he'd> be- <laughs> You're kidding. Yeah. All right, so, so um, Greg, wh- where are you now in, in the whole Apple thing? Because you know you you playing a ton of Apple, you have the whole website thing going and replays. Uh, how do we get to this point? What do you mean? How how, how did I? Well, just you know the whole involvement and in making videos and the whole bit. What got you into doing that? You know, a hobby. Uh, I used to uh, back in the day. I, I I used to be a pool player and. Uh, oh. So I'd be, uh, I was on the road for a while and uh, did all that. And uh, long story short, that that game controlled my life for probably 30 years and not in a good way, you know. And uh, so my wife, uh, she liked it when I finally get, put the cue down. And uh, that's when I got in, back into Apple and got an Apple football. And it was around early 2000 when I delved into it. Uh, heavy again and well, uh, so she that, always really? liked to hear the dice uh because she knew i was home you know <laughs> you know you know what oh merle haggard had it right you know those jukebox records don't play those wedding bells you know <laughs> you're out in the honky tonks in the bars that's not the place you want to be as a married man no. <laughs> what was your pool game of choice oh nine ball oh uh, nine ball yeah 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 so that's uh, great you know, I got so I got got into Apple football, and uh, you know, you, it morphs. You know, it, it, it's a hobby, and one thing leads to another. Uh, not a good answer, but uh, that's how it happened. Is this you stuff that you already had? I'm sorry. You, Go ahead, Dave. I just say so. You, you're just enjoying sharing your joy for the game and yeah. helping some people with some videos yeah. that you're doing and, and instructing on your whole website there. Well, you know, with you all know, the. Well, a lot of it, Dave, too, is you fill in the voids, okay? Uh, if I never seen a ton of uh, instructional videos when I did them, so I took it on and created them myself. Uh, you know, usually when there's a void, somebody will step in and fill in. That's for everything I've done is basically that. Uh, back at the time when I started out, it's been 10 years since I've had my website, really Jeff and I were the only ones I think that had a really an online presence at that point. Am I, am I right, Jeff? I'm yes, sir. Yes, sir. You and with, your, with the football, with the app of Facebook group that you're, you know, yours and uh, my website. Yeah. Yeah. That was good. We approached Besides it. Besides BTL, you know, between the lines, you know, yeah, that was the thing. I mean, you know, coming, trying to get between the lines is great. And then it's the real, real deep end of the pool. It's like mm-hmm. galactic in terms of, you know, but with emerging social media, I took the Facebook route because I wanted to, and it was completely accidental, but I wanted to get that, that number up. I mean, mm-hmm. you get become obsessed with that, that counter and Greg wisely took the blog route where he's got everything, you know, archived so that mm-hmm. it's much more of a standing thing that it's a, you know, a more, uh, perpetual resource jeff has you been a steady player since the early 80s no i've i've had i think this is my fifth i would call apple life i dropped you know because uh, i'm probably the last person who should even have a, a gaming channel because i was just like oh Steelers are doing bad i'm out of it i can't stand right. it then, then the giants were doing well my dad is from rhode island so i said hey maybe i'll get my dad it's the complete opposite of greg so i got the master game finally and i got a bunch of 70s teams during a warehouse sale and and then try to get him into it. He wasn't into it, so I dropped it again. 
Roethlisberger came on and I was like, uh, you know, let me grab and see where they are now. As I was surprised, you know, those, uh, Greg knows those cards with no backs on them and all. And yeah. Mm -hmm. and yeah. Old Perforated old. cards. Yeah. Oh yeah. That was oh, fun. Yeah. Or yeah. a bunch of those sets. I get chads all over the house. And then, then did uh, 2011 to like 2016 and then came back in 22. So it's just, it comes and goes, like you said, it morphs and you, you know, I think it's good to take a break. I mean, you know, Greg is like, no one on the planet is going to play the number of games and the way he plays it. So he's the utmost resource and probably the greatest thing that's happened to the game. Yeah. So Greg, what made the game click for you? Well, I'm a football guy, you know, I love football, um, you know, Played it, love it, breathe it. Breathe it. Uh, it's it's one of my passions. And what I love, what I like about Apple Football is it uh, it replicates the it replicates the ebb and flow of an actual game. You know, I mean, you're playing, Dave. Now he's getting into playing. Mm -hmm. Don't you feel it when you're playing the game? It's like you're watching it on Sunday afternoon. I keep saying that. I keep on that. Yep. I was yeah. talking to somebody today about I maybe mean, it was you Ron, on the way home and I was like I can't believe how this football game feels like I'm watching a football game on TV all yeah. the quirks that happen all the things there was one game I played in 78 it was L LA Rams at Philadelphia and the Rams punter had two fumbles on punts I mean, so I'm thinking maybe it's pouring rain and the snap went through his hands, but two in a row, two punts in a row, I rolled the fumble on the kicker, and and they were done. And Philadelphia, you know, picked up a touchdown and a field goal. That's ten easy points off the punter's mistakes, and mm -hmm. and that stuff happens, yeah. you know. And it could be two in a game. It just, you know, it's rare, but I mean, so yeah, I mean, and and I I talk all the time about um history maker golf from play, how that feels like you're watching the tournament play out and then the 18 holes down the stretch as you know, the, the back group is the top guys playing in and you're seeing who's hanging around from the top group. That feels like you're watching Sunday golf and Apple football feels like you're watching Sunday football. Absolutely. The, the other thing that got me into it is I wanted a game that I could shuffle different personnel packages because, you know, today's pro game, you know, oh, it's not oh, like it, it's not like it was in the seventies. Everybody in you know twenty one personnel, you know, two tight, you know, two running backs, one tight end. You know, now there's so many different personnel groups, and you can do that now. And that was really got what got me back into that because I wanted a game to where I could have a two tight end set, go mm -hmm. to three wide. You know, that and then so had that you, app it does that and it scratches my itch. Had you played other football games? Uh, little Avalon Hill when I was a kid, you know, Peter, yeah. uh, the, the only game else, board game run, and I, I played nuts to bolts and just couldn't get enough was, was title bout boxing. Oh, that's and, a great and, game. And, and I must have got, I can't tell you how many rounds of title bout I've, I've done, but I've got, uh, I, bu I bought two for the computer. It's a fantastic. It is. It's, it's just tremendous. Jeff, what made Apple football click for you? Uh, I think what, what Greg, everything that Greg has said, I mean, uh, the idea, I mean, it, it's not even like you're watching the game. It's like you feel, you feel, you know, you feel the excitement from the kickoff and then you can feel the, 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 the futility at times, you know, um, oh, yeah. it's yeah. a struggling three and out, three and out. You can't do anything. And it's that intricacy of this system. It's simple. You know, some people might say it's simplistic, but I contend and I know, Greg, I mean, you know, it's not some relic and you're finding that out. It's it is a viable. It is a hugely formative and influential game. And it is a simple replication of personal and team strengths compared to one another, combined with uh, the results by field position that make it harder to get that yardage from your opponent's nine to goal line. You know, yeah. that, that that was genius. And to be able to see, you know, the the 85 Bears are 50-point pass defense, 47 run versus, you know, the Buccaneers originally were like 26 offense, 29 defense. Mm. You know, and that and with, with every player rated one to five, you've got that window of 55 to 11. You're never going to see a team down at 11. I'd be like Pop Warner. But, you know, in those 20s, you know, to – up until like, the mid 30s and then the high 30s to 40s, you see those gradations. And mm -hmm. if you follow uh, our Apple football handbook, you'll see 
you know, as we you look at the 79 Niners with uh, Joe Montana as an XF, an extra football player, it's like a one pointer. And then two years later, and you see that mm. progression and the numbers are popping off the card like crazy. It's like, wow. It's just you can line these personnel up and see the, the growth, you know. Mm -hmm. I think one of the best things about APA, whether it's the baseball, the hockey, the football, because that's what I play, play a little bit of golf, but not much, is the base game is fine. But you really can make it your own with some little tweaks mm -hmm. without wrecking the game or wrecking the results of the game. At least that's kind of how I feel because I've done the hockey game. I've really kind of made some changes, mostly just to how it, the penalties are handled you've, and things like really that. You've really done a good job making that game your own. But but that game, the, the instructions were kind of weird and clunky and, and things were spelled out. But I, I managed to kind of polish the edge of that hockey to now I can bang on a game and it feels like a hockey game. And I'm still – stick it with the core part of the game and that's what i noticed with the football and, and greg was bringing up how he likes to bring in two tight ends and all this other stuff and i noticed that when he plays at least through his videos he's always modifying the defensive number and i think tebow does this too is that you know when he brings in somebody he changes the offense number what i'm doing as a beginner is i'm just kind of going with the starter numbers and that's my offense and defense number for the day Unless, unless, like I say, the quarterback's out. Like, I think uh, Ken Anderson's out for the 78 Bengals and, and Reeves is in or something like that. So he he dropped one because he was one less. So the offense that day would be one less. But for the most part, I'm just kind of letting it run. And I figure if they're bringing in a second tight end, well, they're bringing in an extra lineman. And I just kind of let that play out because I, I don't know enough about football to, to make all those changes. So for me, kind of running it basically is almost as much fun as I think Greg's having by – making it his own with all the changes. And and I think that's what APA does great is is you can really just kind of make it your own or leave it as is, and it's still great. Yeah. I know when I play a game, I got, I think, like 16 different innovations I use, you know, in, in every game, and it doesn't slow me down one bit, you know. Um, that's the beautiful thing about uh, I, I, APA football is you could play it out of the box, or you could use a, a ton of different innovations that people have come up with over the years to enhance the realism of it. Uh, and I mean, I just ab ab absolutely love it. Yeah. And Jeff think, knows him. My, my, my best friend, Mark Zarb, he's an incredible um, we had him innovator. And he's yeah, come yeah. up with some just game changing innovations for it. Stuff like yards per catch innovation that really make the difference between your possession receivers and your 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 Homer Joneses of the world, you know, the deep threats, you know, uh, Cliff Branch type receivers. Uh, there's there's innovations out there that really take the game to the next level. Yeah, it does. We need to get him back. We had him on. And we talked about his contributions to Apple hockey. Uh, oh, we, need yeah. to get him, we need to get him back on the show and talk about the Apple football at some point, too. Is it possible? To do cross era, I know it'd be very hard to get any cross era in football re to be realistic, but just for kickers and, and that. But you know, I always think about uh, uh, old Danny Hodge, good, you know, who yeah. used to do the cards, good friend of mine, and of course uh, Jeff knew him too. And uh, uh, I was playing him in a face to face game at a uh, uh, convention a few years back. And he had the uh, 63 Browns, and I had oh, my oh, 93 oh. Cowboys. Oh, it, it, man, I tell you, it ain't even fair, man. You, you got a 70% passer, you know, going against, you know, a 50% passer. You know, I mean, Jim Brown, I mean, as great as Jim Brown was, you know, the, you know, his linemen were out, you know, if, you, if it was in real life, they're outweighed by 80 pounds. Of right. Man, oh, absolutely. You know? I mean, I shut down. I, it was, it was, it wasn't even fair. And you know, so it's, it's hard, you know. It is. Jeff, Jeff and I had an experience kind of like that too. When I was there with the '99 Rams playing it, your Lions. I, I'm, re, I'm reading the, uh, the my rat, wrap up of Canton 2013. I, 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 I was convinced that I could take the '62 Lions. I just want to say, you know, hey, they, they beat the Packers. They're the only game that you That's know. Right. This, yeah, this is, yeah. It's a case where you know, on paper. You know, the game's going to perform hyper well. It's tough to get that kind of momentum aspect and the intangibles. But, yeah, yeah Greg, you had the uh, – I played you the tw against your 2011 Saints, and you were, it was 28-7 after three quarters, and we called it. 
Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I brought, I actually, and I'm sorry about this, Greg, but I brought the 68 Jets to Canton last year and I played Dave Weatherby in the 2019 Chiefs. And I oh. rolled like three straight sacks of Namath, just like, I mean, that's the un the other uncanny yeah. thing was basically replicated. Well, you got you know a fifty percent passer there going against uh, Mahomes. You know, I mean, yeah. it's, it's not possible. It but, ain't fair, you know. But, but it tells you, it shows you exactly. That's why that's not going to work because right. you unless you've got now and in some of the newer versions of these sets, uh, case in point, the sixty six Bears where you had a uh, Johnny Morris. Now here's a, a big issue if you're as played. You know, Johnny Morris, I think, right, uh, was injured in the second play of the second game, but he has a card now. He didn't have one in the 30-card original. He now has a card, and he's an A-rated receiver. So do you let him play out the season like you would and maybe have a couple of extra guys and maybe amp up that 66 team to a 65-35 pass run team just for the kicks? Who knows? Well, I was wondering about the kicking game. If you wanted to, you could do it, you know? I've always wondered about the, the kicking game because – you know, you, you play, a, you know, again, a Jim Brown team against a modern team. And, and I can't imagine that th those old Cleveland teams are kicking 50, yeah. 60 yards field well, goals. Russell was pretty yeah, good. Yeah, I'll tell you, Dave, the other issue is in the punting game. Just oh. in the 76 game, season right here, I, I'm shocked rolling these games how poorly the punting was in 76. Yeah, I 35 mean, yards was a good punt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, it, it was – Well, that's why Ray Ron, got it, 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 it's, it's It's horrendous. You know, it's well. The Tampa kicker was it? Dave, Dave Green. Dave, Dave Green. Green. He well, was yeah, kicking and punting. A, and, and a was... right now for him. I'm just playing him right now. I got the first half of uh, the game against the the Chargers, and uh, they're down twenty-one to nothing. Yeah. Opening kickoff, they fumble a, a return, and Chargers recover at the uh, guy, Tampa eight-yard line. You know, me and Ron went. Starts. Ron and I went through the statistics for that 76 Tampa team, especially the kickers. Oh, yeah. And Ron, what, what was he making? Like 60% of the extra points oh, or something horrible. like that. It, it was, was it was, you know, every time I play a game, no matter what game it is, quick play, long play, it's like he's missing kicks left and right. Hey, Ron, you know? I got Tampa fun. Just moving the ball is a struggle. Okay. Oh, I'm sure. I got I got him down to the charger five yard line. <laughs> the drive stalled. So it, it, in game two, Roeder was the kicker. And he comes out, and of course he misses the the twenty two yard field goal <laughs> It is, it is, and again you feel, and that's where you really feel. I will say though, for in Dave Green's defense, I played the seventy six season with the original set, and his field goal percentage came out spot on fifty seven point one percent. It's right. ugly, but it's yeah. accurate. Yeah. But it's accurate. That's yeah. right. Well, they, I'm going to show you guys something here. Okay. All right, this is a little spoiler. I haven't done the official unboxing yet, but I did I did pick up a couple of things for my birthday in a couple of weeks, and I'm not going to play until the birthday. Thank it's coming up in a couple of weeks, but I will give you a little spoiler of what I did get. Ah, what do you got Whoa. there, Broadway Joe? That's 68? I can't see. Yeah. Oh, yes. Beautiful. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> yeah. 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 Greg, would you rather have a 67 or a 68 card? Well, so, you know, that 4,000 yard season, you know, you know, Jeff, I replayed that season a few times, uh, multiple times using a, a first generation set created by Mark, but I got, uh, yeah, I'm, um, I'm going to buy the Apple one and do that one. Just, just to, oh, nice. to do it. It was the Super Bowl set. That's what I got. God, yeah. perfect. Nice. Well, I, I didn't get the whole season. I just got the Super Bowl for that. Now, if you, you play know. that game 10 times, how many times do the Colts win? I got it. But probably maybe 10 out of 10 or nine. I, I play one of the great, I've played a lot of games and one of the greatest games I've ever, probably the greatest game I ever played. And it was shoot. I was still living in Virginia at the time. That shows you how long ago it was. Okay. And I was, what I was doing was I was, I just had a mini replay going. I used to like to do them where I would take a, a Super Bowl team. So like I take the six, six, 68 with the Colts and the Jets and I'd replay their 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 season. So just I'd play the Colts and then I'd play the Jets week one, week two. You know, I'd alternate. And then I'd skip the playoffs and I'd play a Super Bowl. So the Colts for were were just really dominating the game, but turnovers kept the score manageable. They were down by 10. And like nine minutes left in that game, 
the worm turned, man. It, it, it turned my way. It, 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 Jeff, man, the dice, they, they just, they, they smiled on, they smiled on Joe. They, and the Jets came back and won that game, man. It was the greatest game I've ever played. I played it's, that in the second and 10, and the Jets won. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Tell you what, man. I mean, that's, that's I, I don't think it was as much of a fluke as. Mm. As people thought it was, it was no, I'm gonna I play mean, it. We'll see how we get with 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 uh nameless quick release. You know, the Colts they, they didn't change anything, they brought they were a heavy blitz team, mm. and uh, it hard to blitz Broadway Joe with that. That that I may be the only guy in the history of football might have had a quick release in Reno, but that, oh, that's a yeah. coin flip. I mean, that's a coin flip, man. Mm. Greg, you yeah. should check out um, Brett Musburger was on um, Dan Patrick over the Super Bowl because Musburger is based out of Vegas now. Okay. And he, and he talks about, cause he will, if you look at the famous picture of Namath in the lounge chair, doing yeah. the guarantee Musburger is in that picture. He was okay. a reporter for one of the Chicago papers. Okay. And so he's yes. not in Miami for that. And, and Musburger tells that story in great detail of, of that. And, how a lot of those reporters weren't surprised, prob- pretty much because they knew that Baltimore wouldn't change all that much, just like no, you said. No, no, they didn't change nothing. They so, figured it'd be good enough. You know, how, how can you blame them? I mean, the way they beat the, the snot out of the Browns, you know, what you know, right. to shut them out to get in, you know, and w- one loss, they were said they were at that point in time, they, the greatest team. They, some were hyping as the greatest team ever, you know. Right. So, uh yeah. But we know from your replays that that's the 91 Redskins, right? <laughs> well, you know what? I, I haven't done the 91 season. So oh, I, was that Zarb? Uh, yeah, that was Mark Zarb yeah, that Mark, ran Mark the table yeah. with, the nine, with the 91 Redskins. Yeah. So. yeah. Nice. So let, let me ask you this. Um, when did they switch to the, the, the newer style cards like this from the old style? Well, from the perforated sheets? Well, there's well, several old and new. There, there's there's lots okay. of old and new periods. <laughs> yeah, well, okay, get me up. Go to ahead, speed Jeff. That. Answer. You know better than me. So, so well, let's go through quickly um, as I can. So the game comes out in 1958 with the 1957 season, which had that really incredible NFC West playoff. It's Jim and, Brown's rookie uh, year too. Yeah, exactly. Right. So it's. I mean, Apple. I mean, just got it so right between that big pl- game and the and the greatest game ever played. That game, that version of the game and the boards lasted until about 65, and then they did a version. And in both the original 57 and 65 sets, they had to correct all the quarterback cards. They issued corrections, but the boards changed a bit. And then in 72, they issued a third version of the pre-mastered boards, which I have here, which had the um, – have the uh, they started using the injury ratings, and they had this allocation chart and uh, – they in the 72 set you could only use allocations for the defenders and then they use that uh chart to add codes to the uh receivers and re- anyone who caught a pass starting with the 73 season then the master game comes out in 83 with the 82 season and you see uh the qs codes to allocate sacks since that became official and they did some tweaking on the uh well, well the, the master charts changed things up so instead of seeing a lot of ones in the quarterback card you see some twos because you're seeing the Instead of like the old blitz, which is like a four-line drop, the blitz becomes a two-line drop. Uh, then uh, in the 90s, when you see the game that Al's playing, is the they strip the master game down, but the cards are follow pretty much the same formula. Um, in 99 set, they went to that 2000 edition in the green box. They started using three generic cards. And... Um, and I forgot also that uh, starting the master game, you have the V ratings for the defenders. You know, it was a V slash two slash three would be two against the pass, three against the run. In the 2000 to 2022 set, they started using V ratings for the offensive players. In 2006, they added the uh, results 37 to 42 to the special teams charts. So most of the cards are the same, but that changes the uh, special teams a bit. That's why Justin Tucker gets that 37. And Ron Taylor is a great Apple football uh, historian and player, uh, pointed out that that's 37 is what gets you the Justin Tucker 66 yarder. Um, In terms of typography, Greg, it's around, what, 2010, 11, when they went back finally and they started 
uh, or maybe in 2013 when they redid the uh, basic book again and went back to the uh, the big red box like this. Right. That's when you see the sans serif type and what you see now. And uh, what you're seeing now, of course, Denny was doing is the, the recap so that, you know, the 76 set, I assume, uh, Greg, you're using like the 2018 or whatever that, I forget what that is. Yeah, it's copyright yeah. 2017, yeah. That's it. And then, Dave, your 78 set with the 2001 Dolphins, everyone keeps pointing that out. <laughs> yeah, mine is 2021. Copy yeah, 2021. Hero kick forever, you know that. Right. So, so is, so. I'm using the big red book, okay? And I'm actually using the master book um, for okay. that. Cool. So I have uh, 2011, 2021, and 2022. Those are all still compatible with that master book I'm using, right? Correct, yeah. Anything, any any card set made from 1983 to now will work with a master book. This right. is the 2008 version. Or even 82. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, that's, that's what yeah, I'm using. I'm using yeah, that. That's a 20... 2020 set where the play with the, okay. the results are ordered by field position and set of play type. Uh, the only difference really is the 2000s from 2006 forward, you don't get that 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42 in the kicking game. And you see that in the uh, 2008 book for the 06 and 07 seasons, they issued like a, a, an insert chart, kind of like they did when the kicking rules changed in 74. There's that little piece of paper that showed you, well, the goalposts are back of the uh, back of the end zone now. Remember, so, Jeff, yeah. they used to have it on their download section. The, yeah. the, the, and they, they took it off. I don't know. They, they oh, really? don't have it there no more, but. It's, I'm sure it's there's a million versions out there. We can yeah. pop that So out. how would Dempsey have hit the 63 yarder? So he couldn't originally because right. That's one of the big things that happened in the 72 set. He did that in 70, and I've got a video. I compare the uh, Tucker and the Dempsey thing, but here's what happened. When they came out with the third and final pre-master game revision, you'll see here that they expanded the kicking results. Uh, they added a 50 to 56-yard line uh, possibility with an asterisk. So guys like Don Cockroft could kick uh, from the longer distance. So originally, with the original set, Dempsey couldn't make that because I, I forget what it tapped out at. But, you know, obviously a 56-yard line and a seven-yard spot of the kick, there's your 63 yards. And then, of course, 74 blew that out of the water. So you had to add 10 yards to your range on the, you know, it, it screwed it up a bit. He kicked that from his 37-yard line. That's right. Crazy. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I remember, Ron, I watched an interview with Alex Karras, and, and he was saying how they were just mocking him, you know, before they, yeah. they kick. You know, like, there's no way he's going to make this. They were all, you know, yucking it up, you know. And then uh, we know what the happened. The actual Don Cricky video call of that exists. Oh. And so it's the whatever the lines scored. I It doesn't really matter what it was. And so it starts with the kickoff return some really fast play and i don't remember who was the coach I think it was, was a pass to the sideline or something yeah like i mean that. something like the only thing they you know they weren't doing hail marys because staubach hadn't invented it yet <laughs> and um and they bring him out and it cleared by a foot yeah yeah yeah. And Tucker did it to the Lions too. You know, he's Detroit. <laughs> about him. It's like and that kick would have been good from almost 70. Yeah. Yeah. You that know, was nuts. You know, that was, yeah. I mean, so I let me ask, what, yeah. Do, do either of you guys uh, play PC uh, football games? I don't know. I oh, own have it? the action PC bundle. I got it. Okay. I right to the 78 Oilers Steelers. I, you know, I appreciate all the work that they've done on that game and PT mm -hmm. games now is, uh, you know, uh, Tim Plum, yeah. they're going to get data from sports info solutions. Mm -hmm. Uh, I just, you know, I'm, I'm firmly in the camp that I want to see the card, make the decision. Yeah. I want to see the numbers and how the interaction happens. Yeah. I, I have utmost faith that those PC games are accurate and people love them, but I'm just going to stick with the cardboard. Yeah. Well, my, my question was going to be, and I know Ron doesn't play cards and dice all that up, but my question was going to be is that when you play the PC game and things go sour, I get, I get real upset when I, with that. But when I'm rolling dice, I got nobody to blame but myself because I'm pitching the dice. And so uh, the question was, is that when when you're rolling dice and things are going bad, there's really nobody to blame. You can't say, oh, the computer's rigged. They're, they're rigging the dice. This is on you. 
And so I find that I don't get nearly as mad playing the cards and dice because I got nobody to blame it on but myself. Dave, I always say that the dice know. And what I mean by that is, take this for example. I, I've played the 19, replay the 1998 season with the, the, the card set that was created by the Appa Journal. Mark Zarb created one for me. And then when Appa came out with it, and every time I've played it, Minnesota always loses in the playoffs because the dice somehow know. <laughs> It's true. Okay, that they're not going. They're they're not going to. You know, they're not going to make the big play, right? You know, I, I I got so many examples, but it's just it's it's just funny to me. It's like the dice are the great equalizer. They 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 know. I, I will say this because of my physical issues. You know, the app of style cards and dice isn't something that's going to work for me, sure. which is which is too bad because I've seen what Dave does and he loves it. But I've done second and ten, which gives you dice rolls. Which is, you know, I actually played first and ten, which you had to print the sheets to mm. revise the ratings, and then it was, you know, that's a pure card and dice port. He's just made it so for that. And yes, I understand how that goes. You see how the dice roll goes, or when you know that you call the right play, and you roll the ninety nine, and he's flushed, and then you roll it again, and you see the roll again. I did um, strat football, which doesn't play as well as what you guys are talking about i did um a couple of years ago i did the bills chiefs playoff game the divisional playoff game the one where the bills gave up the 13 points in 67 seconds my dad if he was still with us would would you know <laughs> oh that would have killed him um and that was one of the greatest things i've ever rolled and i think honestly because it was a card and dice thing. I will fully agree that cards and dice gives you an intimacy that yeah, you just even it. even in a virtual sense that you just can't get from. Is I mean, if you've ever if you've seen my work, you know that action PC baseball is my bread and butter for what I show on the channel. Mm -hmm. But as far as it being intimate and personal, it's seeing the dice and looking the result on the card. I got a question that just came to mind. And, and uh, Ron, I'm going to start with you on this one, okay. and then we'll go around the table. Um, what was the in, – in any of the games that you've played, what what was the closest to reality moment that you've ever had that maybe creeped you out that said, holy cow, I can't believe I just played this. This is almost exactly how it played I, out in real life. Do you have anything that comes to mind that you were just, like, blown away? And I'll give you an example – I was actually playing a game of hockey. And I don't know if it was app or a bones or a shootout, but the goalie got hurt and injuries in the hockey games are somewhat rare. And I don't use, so I played it as the goalie got hurt and put in the backup for the rest of the game. When I went to the, the internet and searched that game, the goalie got hurt and they brought in the backup. What are the chances <laughs> of that creepy. happening? And that was creepy to me. Cause I'm like, Holy yeah. cow, this is exactly now the score might've been different. But this guy that started the game didn't finish this game in real life. And in my game, it played on the table. So that, that was my creepy moment. Ron, do you have one? I think for a pure computer, it would be I did um because my first replay did online was 78 with Action PC. And I did that Dallas Baltimore game. And the final score, I think, was in two or three points of whatever it was that Dallas did. It was it was it was an absolute blowout. I think as far as as rolling the dice. With helpers and all that would have been that that um Kansas City Buffalo game, Kansas City having to run right down the field and score at the Buffalo had they left Mahomes too much time, and and I forget who I was controlling in that game. I think it was Buffalo, but we left Kansas City too much time, and to see again the magic of the cards and dice because you can see how it all played out, mm -hmm. and that and so yeah, I think. That too. That you know, the other that. other one being um, Fred Sanford nearly taking a no hitter in a World Series clincher in action PC baseball. But, but yeah, you know, I I definitely think that those because you are reading something besides the text on the screen for the results, um, this makes those things stick out more for you. Mm. Jeff, did you ever have a moment that was like, oh my gosh? I saved this one. I pulled this one out. I always <laughs> love this one. Uh, I mentioned that uh, I went back to Appa in 87 
because of the 86 Giants. And, uh, you know, it was one of those warehouse sales, so you could buy sets for like five bucks. So I loaded up on 71, 73, 74, 76, I think, uh, 84, 85. And, I, you know, the first thing you do, you play Dolphins, Vikings, Steelers, Vikings. And the Vikings, to Greg's point about the Vikings, it, there's, there's a curse – sadly across the board no matter what realm from poor minnesota but i did a deep cut in 74 figuring oh you know namath goes and i'm sorry this is good greg again when namath goes to the rams so it's 74 week seven and uh it's the rams and jets now the rams were you know of course in the 70s were a powerhouse they always fell short they lost three straight nfc championships 74 75 76 and uh but they they um they rams played the jets and you would think i mean at the the time the rams i think were five and what were they five and one before this game and the jets are like one in five okay so but the beauty of the system is that not only do you weigh the game uh you know the offense against the defense vice versa and you had that old secondary rule where you tamp down to passes so i just play the rams and jets the original score was 20 to 13 Rams. Pretty close. It's like, how could that happen? And the Jets led 7 6 at the half. My score was 19 14 Rams. Oh. Point off. Wow. Yeah. That, that's what makes it fun is when you get those results. You're like, who? It's fun getting different results, but when you get close sometimes, like, ooh, ooh. It's weird. So, so, Greg, how about you? Yeah, yeah, I always consider it's like I'm not a golfer, but they say when you hit that one shot, you're your first one, then you're hooked, you know, and you, you actually do it down, you know, right down the middle of the fairway. <laughs> well, you know, that's that, that's the moment you're talking about. Well, you know, God, I, I, Dave, I've rolled so many games, you know, I mean, I, I, I it, it's hard for me to place, but there, there's one thing that stands out. I was doing one of those mini replays and I was doing the, uh, a test for Mark, and he wanted me to do the 2007 little mini replay of the Giants pa Patriots, you know, where I played each team their season and replayed in the Super Bowl. And I checked the, uh, Tom Brady's stats after the first two games, and I just compared it against his actual stats from the first two games, and the attempts were exactly the same. The completions were exactly the same, and the yardage was the oh, exact. Oh man! <laughs> no, that's so two games, but but after but that, still. I was like, "Wow, oh, man, <laughs> you can't beat this, man! You know, you can't beat this." So uh, that 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 would I'd have to use that as my uh, like whoa moment, you know? Yeah. Wow. Well, now that that's pretty good. So consider um, you consider. Okay. That you call your own plays in in Napa football, how, how would that even be possible? Because unless you knew that he threw X amount of passes, I mean, you know, how much game well, planning you, did you do beforehand? Before and, I play and, a game, I always review the box scores. Mm -hmm. you, you see, but even with that, Ron, even if you have a plan going into it saying you want to get 38 attempts, most of the time, the, the, the flow in, of the game. It's hard to, to replicate that. Right. Oh, know? absolutely. I play yeah, enough football it, it, to know that. So for that to happen like that was pretty that's slick. Stunning. That's stunning. Yeah, dude. that's pretty good. Um, let me talk about the defensive cards. Uh, these right here that you can get from APA. Okay, the defense play calling cards. When, when did they come into play? Dave, can I interrupt you for a second? Sure. I don't mean to be rude. Uh the creator of that is a dear friend of Jeff's and I, Ray Dunlap. And anybody out there, Ray just got diagnosed with throat cancer. Mm -hmm. And if you have any relationship with the Lord or you just have positive thoughts, send him uh, Ray's way. Um, he's the one that created those cards that you put up there. Uh, he's uh, uh, an icon to the game. And uh, I, I just want to throw that out there. Is he uh, on the too. Delphi official board or? Uh, he is, but he, he doesn't, uh, he's not frequent on, on, on BTL that much. Okay. But, uh, yeah. Uh, 
but I, good thing is the the chance it's ninety percent survival rate. So I mean that's right. I like going in those with those odds. But yeah, yeah, yeah. you hear that c word and that's uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That is it's terrible. Well, thanks for pointing that out, and we'll we'll be thinking of him for that's for sure. Yeah. Um. But w- when did uh, when did he come up with those, and when did Apple put them for sale, and and kind of how did all that kind of work out? Um, well, what would you say, Jeff? It was in uh, like. 2016, somewhere in that time it's period? Relatively recent. He's really known for his personal matchup system. Yeah. And he's been, he wrote for the Apple Journal going back to 64, I think. He was actually a Tampa Bay Buccaneers statistician in the 80s. Yeah. Uh, he's, his Im- impact in the game is immeasurable. You and Greg and, and Ray went in the Hall of Fame, Apple Hall of Fame, same time, same class. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's around uh, 2016, something like that. And uh, folks swear by them. They like it. They like to make that uh, extra point matter for the defense. It does override the traditional uh, you know, offense versus defense thing, but it does. Dave, Dave, Dave explain those cards. Uh, well, how I play it, and, and I always specify how I play it because I could be very wrong, but what, you know, it's a, plus 25 to minus 25 and so what right. you do is you compare the off the 11 guys on offense and total their number to the 11 guys on defense on the other team and that's going to give you a positive or negative number and that determines which card you use okay what i like about the cards and, and i could be playing them very wrong but so i've been having so much one fun. card per team it's not that's something well, that changes well, again, over- well that that's what I do. I, okay. I take kind of the starting lineup and yep. I freeze those in just while I'm learning the game. Right. Other people, I know Greg, when, when he brings guys in and out, he'll he'll go and say, okay, now I'm going from plus two to plus three because I've made some changes in the lineups. And I think Tebow does that too, is that he'll he'll, he'll take a different card depending on what well, – so, and that's when you get really involved in the game. And that, that's so the great the thing about Apple. between the offense right? and the defense, and that's and what that's card you use. Now, if I look right here on the, the plus 25, which is as good as you can get, if you look at this card, you'll see a lot of Cs, okay? Okay, so that means it's going to be in the C index, which is better for the defense, okay, if I'm not mistaken, okay? If, if my mom was watching, that's not grades. Yeah. That, now, if I go to the other, other end of the spectrum, if by chance a team's defense was 25 points worse, now you look at the card and you see a lot of As, okay? okay. So that means you're going to be in the A index a lot the other team will be so that means the defense is not that good and so what i like about it is is the game i as as i understand it when you look at the offense and the defense if they're within eight points you're going to be in the quote b index okay and i think that's for all your runs and that will only change with your receivers that might change to an a if you have a receiver what i love about these cards and why i use them is that each card has a mix of a index, B index, and C index. So you're not stuck in B. And in my mind, and again, I could be very wrong here. And if I am, point it out. But in my mind, when I, instead of being in the B index, let's say I'm in the A index for this play, that means someone on the offense either made a play or someone on the defense didn't make a play. And conversely, if I'm rolling in the C index, that means the defense is ready for it and they're geared up. Maybe they keyed on the guy correctly, or maybe someone on the offense didn't make a play and that's that's kind of how i and i love to see that variation so i'm not always in bbb on every single run that the idea that oh i'm in a index the right. offensive tackle made an unbelievable block and now there's a chance for him to get more yards so that's how i understand the cards when i play solo um and and maybe i'm wrong with that but i i, I love the variation and again the better the defense is, the more C's on the card, and the worse the defense is, the more A. So it does move around, but it's it's not it's not static. It's very dynamic to each individual play, but it is weighted to whether defense is better. So it's, am I kind of in the ballpark? Yeah, you totally. And and it is really it's worth pointing out that it's kind of the obverse of the way the game was conceived. So um, in the old, you know, basically what you're saying, you would when you achieved uh, an offensive index. Uh, this is the older board, so it was a plus 10 to minus 5. If you're offense, you would compare the offense to the defense, and you would see how you would determine how many points over under the offense is, and that would give you the index. Whereas the defensive cards will tell you you're you're doing it from the defensive point of view. So you're saying my defense is plus one or plus two or minus four. I think I don't know that you'd ever see a 25, or you might someday. But it, yeah. the, but the defense calling cards kind of, I think, and Greg, you can correct me, you know, the floating index of Howard Oscog, I think, did he really sit like in the 89 issue? Yeah. You know, I, I, 
Yeah, I think it was the 89 issue and he did the floating index. Yeah. So that I think it kind of translates to that a little bit. Um, I'm a firm B index guy because I think, and Greg, again, we'll, we'll correct here, but you know, the, Apple works in these different stages. First of all, you get that, you know, A, B or C index. And within that, then these cards are cooked to deal with how many times that team's going to be in the B mm -hmm. or C index. You might be in the A once or twice. You know, in fact, we talk about the 76 Buccaneers. You think they're going to be in the C index that whole time. They were actually in the B index, six of those 14 games. Because really? A lot of the AFC yeah. teams weren't that great. The Bills were two and twelve. The C, well, then that's not the Seahawks. The uh, the uh, the Jets. Uh, Jets are three and eleven. Yeah. So you know it, but within that B index, even in there that B index, those those bucks, they're they're tamped down. If you compare those running numbers and those passing Spurrier's card, you know it's still hard for them to move that ball. And then the Seahawks right. forget it. So. Yeah. You know, uh, but I, I totally appreciate the what what the folks are doing with that. Uh, it does kind of add that element. And you're right. It's like, could you ever conceive of? And it, it all comes down to football logic. So you're playing the '76 Buccaneers, and we interviewed Pat Toomey about it, and he's talked about this a lot. It was just like it was like a Civil War battlefield. The injuries. It's not like they did not play yeah. football. It's not like they were out of position. They were just beat up, and they mm -hmm. weren't yelling. So what you're saying is exactly – it's totally valid. It's football logic. We came up to the line, and maybe the Bucks gelled that one play. We just mm -hmm. got it, and it, the, the fence just fell off. So, yeah, it, it adds a real cool quirk if you're – you know, follow that that line. Yeah, Dave, I can I add a little historical yeah. context? I, I, listen, I love Ray, and, and Ray Ray made those cards. I'm not a fan of those defensive cards. And, 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 and there's, they're fine, and you use them, enjoy them. The reason I, I'm not a fan is <clears throat> Scott Fletcher, when he created Fletch 67, uh, and I don't know the exact year he did, but it, it's, I think it's somewhere in the 90s because it's been around a long, long time. When with, yeah, with, and, and that's the, that's based off yeah. Scott Fletcher's. Yeah, I system. override with this. So this yeah. was on your suggestion, Greg. Is but that, that no. but that's Scott Fletcher? Now, okay, let, let can me you explain what that is for those of us who. Uh, don't yeah. Know so, what so what this is? This is a automatic defensive setting card that comes with the game. Okay. Okay, and there's also alternative defensive chart which, where you can roll and see if it's going to be GS or D. But anyway, I basically says on second and ten or more, you're always going to be playing deep. In a, one of Greg's video, he specified that even the worst team in the league. Is it knows when to play deep. Exactly. You know, and that makes sense. And then you got a third and seven or more, and you're automatically playing deep. So when I roll on the defensive cards, I will automatically default to this if the situation occurs and be playing deep. And then conversely, fourth and one or anything inside the two yard line, you're playing G, which is ground. So it just, you know, if, if it's fourth and one, you're not playing deep. You, you know, and, and you know, and, and Greg explained that in his videos. So uh, this yeah. will override everything for me, at least as far as, you know, yeah, the D when you're the using G. the defensive cards, use them during the neutral downs, you know. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. but what I was getting at, the reason I'm not a fan of those, Scott Fletcher created Fletch 67, which is the defensive chart that you just held up, okay? And the reason he did that is because Apple football is solely based – off of the offensive cards, right? Okay. You read the plays off the quarterback's card for passing off the quarterback. You read it off the running. The defense absolutely brought nothing to the party, except if you had plus eight, you could put somebody in C index. Okay. That's all that they had. There was no bite to defense at all. So Scott Fletcher created this. And I think it was sometime in the nineties when he did it to give defense some sort of, uh, to make it matter a little bit, because mm -hmm. if you look at the difference between a play result in from B to A, it's a yard. So like if you're if you're in B index and then if you're if you're running it and then it's an A, it's going to be you're going to add a yard on to what the play result would be like in C's minus yards. So that's how you separate the good defenses from the bad defenses. The good defenses have teams in C now. That's two yards difference on a carry, you know, that, mm -hmm. and where, what Ray did with those cards was, is he took away from the, the, the strength of, 
Fletch 67 because you're basing it, the, the defense, off the offensive points. I just do it to where I use the defensive points, use Fletch to determine the defensive alignment, use the floating index that Jeff put up, the offensive index finer system, or the one created by my best friend Mark Zarb, to, to, to determine the offensive index. And, you know, so I always said to Ray, I says, you know, yeah, th those cars are nice and they're markable and, they're, you know, $5, you know, you can't beat the price, right? You know, and everybody likes a new toy, you know, it's wonderful. <laughs> but it it takes away from, you know, defense doesn't have much strength in, in this game anyway. So, you know, you're, you kind of took away from, from Fletch. I don't know if, if, if I vocalized it correctly for you to get, but. You know, that's, and that's, you know, and I, I, I actually did one of my first interviews was with, uh, uh, I think even before I interviewed you and Zarb, it was like with a Q and A with flat with Scott Fletcher. And, you know, I think, and, and Dave, to your point about, you know, a four, you know, fourth and one, no team is going to come out uh, in, a, in a light line. You're going to, you're going to stack the line. So I almost felt like, and this may be sacrilege, and I totally appreciate everyone who's modified and created, taking the time to try to make this game matter even more. But I've always felt, I wondered, I wondered if, if that's not like almost a double jeopardy kind of a thing. It's like, it's already a bad team, you know? So to put them out of position more often than not, is that sometimes, and, and Dave, like you noted, you know, it's and second and more than whatever, you, you have some automated automatics mm -hmm. that you're going to call. But in some of those cases, I wonder, you know, ultimately, you know, it's uh, one of the things I miss in the old game because defense really mattered was in the secondary where the, it's the old eight points. Second rule. Eight yeah. point rule. I, I know Zarb, I think he didn't like it. I loved it because, and I'll go back to the 76 Buccaneers, they played, you know, they, they finished their season with the Raiders, Steelers, and Patriots, okay? Um, that's bad. <laughs> and the Raiders, Raiders row, yeah. Yeah, and the Raiders' off, uh, defense originally was 41, so and their offense 46. So the, the Buccaneers were in the C index, and it's a 15-point defensive index, but the Raiders didn't have a 16-point secondary, which shuts down the long and the short pass in that original game. So that – that one point shy in the secondary allowed Spurrier and the Bucks to score, you know, move the ball a bit more. And in fact, the uh, original, uh, what was it? The Raiders score, the original score, speaking of uh, actuals, the actual score is Raiders 49, Bucks 16. How did Tampa Bay score 16 points against the Oakland Raiders of 76, no less? I got the Bucks to score 17 points. I think because of that just slight thing that they used to have that would make the secondary matter. And if you go back to the Abba journals, folks, by extension, logically looked at the front seven. If you got uh, an average four points of that front seven, that 28 or more, you can start dealing with maybe, you know, reducing some yardage or, uh, or you know, their, their defense wasn't bad at all. The Bucks defense, yeah. it was their offense. That was so, yeah. They you know, couldn't the ball. Yeah. <laughs> And then yeah. they got the Summon Brothers for 77 yeah. and, and forward. I mean, that's how the, there's a reason why they got to the playoffs in three years. I always say when you play solo Apple football, if you care about defense, and I care about defense because I consider myself a purist, yeah. is if you bring to the party Fletch 67, and if you have use the innovations, the sack and interception innovation, and Howard's forced fumble innovation, now you brought three things to the party for the defense. And now, now it gives them some teeth, okay? Mm -hmm. and, it, and it really, really makes a difference. All right. So, obviously, there are people who are going to be watching and listening to this who, who haven't played, interested in the game, you know, have watched some of Dave's videos. So, talking about great defenses, there's two teams to me that come to mind, the 85 Bears yeah. and the 2000 Ravens. Yes. If you bought the game and bought the teams to, you know, bought that particular season – how are those defenses, because they are so ahead of the curve, how are they going to play out of the box? The 85 Bears, I'm looking at my uh, the short version of the handbook here. Like I think I mentioned they're 50. Uh, their, their base defense was 49 out of 55 points, or if you use the V ratings, they're 50 against the pass, 47 against the run. Basically, no one's going to have a good day against these guys. And – yeah, you know, you don't get the strip fumbles in the game uh, automatically, but uh, you but know, Dieter Brock's going back to Canada. 
<laughs> yeah, I replayed that 85 season, and uh, the Bears finished 15 and one. Of course, they won the Super Bowl. They beat the uh, wow. uh, Raiders in my Super Bowl. And the funny thing was, is in the week two, they lost to New England, and they lost by a point on the last play of the game. And, really? and I remember there was a big uproar on the site, like, oh, there ain't no way that, you know, they, you know, they, they should lose this guess. Hey, listen, you know, New England made it to the Super Bowl that year. As, as you know, they, they played each other, but. Right. Uh, and, and that, and, and actually because, and that goes back also to, you know, because it is, the game is read off the offensive cards. Any team that played those 85 bears, those 2000 Ravens, some of that's kind of reflected in there. Is that. They did, of course. So, you know, it kind of, that's where you kind of get some evening out. I, you know, I'm far less, I'm not going to try to match <laughs> the deeper understanding where the folks are actually, you know, deep in there. But uh, the Ravens, for what it's worth, had a 48 overall defense, 46 pass, 50 runs. So, you know, the funny thing the about that run. team, Jeff, was is great. And they are, you know, they're the 2000 Ravens, you know, they're historic. But they weren't even the top-rated defense in the league that year. The yeah, Titans were. were. I really? mean, they were two. You know, Tennessee yeah. had the number one defense. And that's that's another thing. I don't have their number here, unfortunately. But that's, see, that's the other thing that's great about Apple football. When you, you, you know, any game, when you go back and look at some of the, the intricacies like that, it's like, oh, wait a minute. How did that – and how does the game reflect that? That's the real trick, those things that you may not, you know, because lore and myth take over. It's like, but wait a minute, this actually happens statistically. So, that's, mm -hmm. as a matter of fact, that's my next replay. I'm replaying the 2000 yeah. season. That'll be my next one. So, I'm, oh. I'm actually looking forward to that. Oh, yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, question here for someone who's just getting into the game the basic game versus the the master of advanced whatever you want to call it what do you think some of the big differences is in that without going too deep into it here and and who do you think it's suited for like uh, you know the basic game the master game what what do you recommend to people and what are the reasons well i always say you know and jeff will know back in the early 80s there was no difference between the master and basic it was it was one game and it was really it was the master game and it was Thing. And when I hear people talk master and basic, it all comes down to the instruction manual. And it all comes down okay. to section two of the master game instruction manual. So, you know, I don't care. I use the basic boards, but I use I'm the master. I use all the bells and whistles, of the master game. And, and like I said, countless innovations. Section two is when you implement all that, the bells and whistles, are, then you're playing the master game. OK. okay. It, the the boards you're you're using and you're just reading it to read results, you know. Uh, so, but if I'm say for for a new buddy, somebody starting, I would say use the basic game just to get down to the learn the mechanics of of the play mechanics, you know. And just and it doesn't matter if you're you got the master game book like you, just learn the mechanics and and play the mechanics just like like you're doing right now, you know and uh, people always get too wrapped up on the, the, the actual boards. What the, the whole thing revolves around what's in those instruction manuals. Okay. okay. That, yes. Uh, that's a real sticking point for me. I, I, I'm going <laughs> to, I wish they would just kind of do away with that because the version that you see Al using, which has this nice, beautiful board, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you can read about it, it the, and it's the black box about that shape, right? Mm -hmm. Apparently, they tried; they were trying to make the game more palatable, and they also put it in some retail shops. So they stripped right. out, they stripped out the screen pass, the draw play, the trick play, which you use uh, once a half, the audible, which you can use once a quarter. They stripped out the goal line defense, the blitz, the three wide receiver, two tight end, full house backfield. And unfortunately, the nickel and the dime. Mm -hmm. uh, and what they did, when you compare these boards side by side, you will see that if you look at a given play and a given field position in the master book, you've got two columns of results for the first and third quarter, second and fourth quarter. And then they even flop that. So it's first and fourth and second, third quarter. You see a number here and a number here, like an 11 and a nine. If you go to the basic book, what they did is they squashed those back into one 
result column that is the an mean average. average. So the 11 and the 9 become a 10. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, they also took out, I think, some of the locator results for some of because you didn't have all the plays, so you didn't have screen draw. They you know, took out the uh, result into the F and W, all those uh, nice uh, things there. But the big problem with the basic game is that you don't know about the nickel defense. And so, and Greg, correct me here, and, you know, the going back to that old 8 point, 16 point secondary, without that nickel defense, that, that nickel back is now how you reduce mm -hmm. the receiver's offensive index boost. It's not the receiver's grade that changes. It's the effect on the team. So you're a B index team. You throw to Lynn Swan, who's an A. You're in the A index unless in the old game you had two defenders in the secondary of eight or more points. And that would negate the boost unless Lynn Swan, which you never did, had an asterisk. Don Hudson had an asterisk, et cetera. Mm -hmm. uh, in the basic game, folks don't know that because that manual is stripped down. And so you might get inflated receiving numbers because you can't reduce that A index. Now, Again, it depends on the nuances you you play with, but uh, that's a point I think that, you know, I would advocate exactly what Greg just noted is that strat is three versions in the box. Just go back to that. I mean, I get that it was a an attempt to make the game more palatable uh, and maybe more accessible, but the mechanics are exactly the same. The master game, and that's, you know, I and others have created these little shortcuts to show you that if you, you put in two tight ends, and you run, you go up two lines on the runner's card, so for like a 17 to a 15, you gain more yards. If you pass out of a two tight end, you drop two lines on the uh, on the quarterback's card from like a five to a seven. And then that also, you would add in. Can, any I, can I add, add something, Jeff? Yeah. Here's the thing. Playing a master game, Apple football, without question, is the greatest face-to-face -face game there is, okay? It, Anybody that knows anything about Apple would never disagree with that. It's the best face-to-face -face game there is. So all the bells and whistles of the master game are really more geared to face-to-face -face play because they skew stats, okay? Yeah, and you don't care when you're playing face-to-face. -face. When you care about is winning the game. You know, right, playing right. to win the yeah. game. Now, right. when you're doing replay, you're playing solo, I – I don't do any unnecessary line changes. The only uh, they're very minimal. I can come off some off keys, and every now and then, if a blitz comes up, because you don't want nothing to skew the stats. Everything's baked into the cards. So, right, right. you know, that's very It's great knowing all the bells and whistles of the master game and all the line changes. You know, I know them all, of course, yeah. by heart. Uh, but I would only implement them if I'm playing a face-to-face -face game. And right, then, right. Does again. that make sense to you guys? Or yeah, yeah. And this is a question from from Pete, and he he's probably asking what what I'm doing. He goes, yes. can I just play the basic game format using the master game booklet, which I just showed? Yes, sir. With the, so I get the added benefit of having the draw play and the screen sure. pass yeah. and the rare plays. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, the and that's kind of what I'm doing. I think that's yeah, how I'm playing. Absolutely. I'm, right. so oh, I'm you're, using, you're using the you're just using the book to read results. Right. I mean, that, it doesn't matter different. which book you use. Right. Those cards. Uh, there's no different formula for the basic. You don't buy a different NFL set that's basic and a master. No. The cards are okay, so, so they they work, they work together. Okay, good. That's good to and, know. And yeah. these cards are created. App of football is created for the basic game. It is basically created to be in B index. Okay, exactly. and it's not created to for for all these these line changes. Yeah, it, it's not. And what no, he's. He says here, I was confused because the Apple web website states that the master game booklet cannot be used independent of the basic game. That's all, that's and I think all. we had a conversation, I don't know if it was on Facebook or email, and I says, I think that just means, you know, they want you to have an understanding of the basic game before you get into the master game. Is it? Yeah. yeah. It's like I use the basic boards, right, Dave? But I, I, you know, glued like on the back page. All, I don't know if you can see it, all the screen passes and draw plays. I have that just glued on to here. So, I, And I don't care about rare plays because for me, I mean, I've played so many games, and, and, and they come up way too often for my liking, okay? Okay. So, you know, I – 
the 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 you used to get with the OVA book, you would get the the old version of the master game uh, uh, rules, which encompassed all the mechanics of the so-called basic and master. And this right down gets to the point now where you know that's eliminating that confusion to me has been a big mission. And maybe I'm just completely wrong about it, but I just it bothers me so much when people are confused by this and that can be off-putting and it just it just it's a sticking point to the purchase and i really would advocate for considering you know just combine them again and understand you don't have to use these rules just like in the original version of the rule here's your original uh you know blitz and ground play you don't have to use them but they're there but the mechanics are the same exactly. you know jeff I, I, I miss the big white boards, man. You know, I, I, I tell you, I used to have them pre-positioned at my desk, right? And I would break I, every move I had was choreographed. I would look like a ninja, man. I had these. <laughs> 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 it, it was comical, man. But right. I, I, I loved them, man. I, I, I loved them. It, it was so elegantly coordinated, you know? I mean, I really do miss, I mean, I do like the 2008 small book and I really do love the uh, the you know, color coordinated ones that came with the mid nineties. I think that was probably the best thing that came out of that version because it's small type, but they're these boards, but they're smaller. Yeah. So, you yeah. know, I, I really do. I use that set a lot for those results. I'm getting good at the book here because I have it off to the side. So I'll roll dice and I'll be, if I, okay, short pass. So I'll flip the short pass as I'm rolling this. So I'm getting pretty good yeah, yeah. with that myself with, the, with having the book over here on this side. Go ahead, Ron. Now, do, you, do, you, do, you, do you put tabs on yours? I always, I always put tabs. I do. Yeah. I got a couple. So I open up, I get yeah. like kickoffs, returns, penalties. Yeah. I just, and, just, these go, yes. you know, just put these on in her. You don't have a memory reference, yet. you know. <laughs> He does. He's just those big white boards, man. I, I used to, after every replay, I'd have to order a new set oh, because yeah. the Whoa. ink would wear off them. You know, you'd be grabbing them, you know, and and you remember the Jeff the, the two thousand eight oh, yeah. booklet, yeah, you know, the color one, the one right oh. there, you know, man, the, the the colored ink would just wear off that for yeah, me. I yeah, use I saw them yours. So much. <laughs> That's why I love the black and white ones. They last. Yeah, you know that's a very good point too. Yeah, I think I saw. I think you. I think you might have been using one. You must have been at, at Canton the first yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, you said. Yeah, and it's just like it's gate talking about game used. Man, that thing was relicked like crazy. <laughs> yeah, well yeah, 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 yeah. Well loved. So obviously, formations have changed an awful lot, and especially in the last twenty five years. I mean, no one's running a two two running back set. It's you know three wide receivers, four wide receivers. The cheerleaders are running routes. How does you know how does APA football handle a modern offense from a game that was designed and you know you're holding up some of the charts for plunge plays? I mean, when's the last time you saw anyone run a plunge play? Yeah, those are the old boards, yeah, yeah, right. But so, right. so how, how has APA kept up with I know that most of the people well, who'll be watching or listening don't play a lot of modern seasons, but for someone who would get the game that is new to it, how, how does it handle all the, the fancy dancy smancy stuff that we see? I don't today? know how you know, like when you the multiple wide receiver, the four wide, five wide sets, it's really the the the, the same rules of, as as three wide. Okay. Right. They don't really uh, 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 address it. But they what they do though is they they've they've done good at keeping up with, with fads. Okay. For example, you know, when, like in 2016, 2017, when the jet sweep came on board and was the right. rage. So that's when they, they changed their cards that gave some guys wide receivers, EBHB ratings, meaning if they had more than 10 uh, rushing attempts, they'd have that and you could run that player unlimited outside. Okay. Or like this year with putting the, um, uh, coding for for running style quarterbacks okay no, lamar jackson yeah so they, they do things like that to keep up with the uh modern game but from the personnel standpoint not so much not you know mm -hmm. they're not not so much um but i always tell people this is a simple game engine okay if you i yes do i use a lot of bells and whistles I do, but I don't 
they don't result in multiple line changes. Okay. Mm -hmm. they, That's a trick. They, they don't. So keeping the game simple, you're going to get the best results. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you can, you know, you're going to do the 89 Oilers or something. You got to do run and shoot. You can put those four receivers in. You don't have to worry about love you. Right. Blue. right. You don't no. have to worry about that. You've got four A grade receivers. No one, if you're playing face to face, no one's going to key them. And, you know, even, you know, solitaire, I mean, you can do what you want to do. It doesn't matter. If you're playing the 78 Raiders, you got two uh, A grade tight ends and Chester mm -hmm. and Casper, which is just one of the greatest teams I ever, you know, it's beautiful. Fun and season. Fun so you season. can do that. You don't have to you worry don't about the, Jeff, in the in the uh, I, I'm if if you don't mind me, uh, if I read something, it's from the uh, detailed rules from the basic game, selecting lineups. It's just to select the starters at each position, offensive and defensive for both teams. Regular starters are listed first on the roster. However, feel free to alter starting lineups to match your offensive strategy and your team's talents. You could start the game with three wide receivers, one running back, two tight ends, one running back, or two tight ends and one re wide receiver. You could put anything you, you want in here, but with the basic game, they, they, they're not telling you that you're going to have any additional line changes, okay, like you do mm -hmm. with the master game, you know, like okay. not to get in the weeds, but if you're playing the master game – and you go to a nickel defense, okay, that implements the reduction rule, unless the receiver is an asterisk receiver. If you go to a dime defense, you also have the reduction rule, but now it lowers the offensive pass by two, and then it makes the, the run defense, you raise it by two. Mm. So you're getting all these – that's yeah. why it's fun when you play face-to-face. Yeah. -face. Head to head, yeah. You know, right. yeah, you. I mean – Sometimes you could have a, a play to where there's a, a, a six line drop. Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, exactly. I remember us playing a guy, and uh, I think he had uh, uh, fourth and goal. All right, and he came out, and uh, I, I think he went uh, three wide. Okay, trying to to get me to. to so what I, I I had a feeling he was going to run the ball. OK, so I went goal line. <laughs> I keyed, had the correct key. So now it was a six line drop because with That's with it. the three wide. OK, you would raise two line raise for a pass, but you drop it by two. So that's negative two. Okay, so right. I went I went goal line. When you go goal line, your defense is Two better against the run, two less against the pass. So now that's a four line drop. And then with the key, that's oh. a two line drop. That's a six line drop, right? So you, you, when you have stuff like that happen, it's fun. Yeah. And that's where you pull the audible card if you still have it there. It's like, whoa, oh, sorry. That's what he <laughs> called timeout. Yeah. 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 You can't change the personnel, but you can do that EBHP thing. Yeah. Right. When you key on someone, if you're playing face to face, you key on somebody. Is there any downside to keying on somebody? If you no, key because wrong, because if, if you if if you don't guess right, it no harm, no foul. Okay. You're just gonna okay. go with the play result of. Uh... Okay. That's now a couple of people asked you, and know, we we did touch on this earlier, but I do want to I want to jump into this. Um, if you've played anything aside from Apple football, and if so, what makes Apple football so special to you guys, maybe compared to anything you've played? What is it about this game? Jeff? Well, I'm a one-trick oh, okay, pony, right. okay? I, I don't play any other games. I, I could guarantee you this. I'm the only member in the Apple Hall of Fame who's never played a baseball game in his life, okay? I tell people, <laughs> if, you, if you put a gun on my head and said, Greg, you need to roll an app of baseball, I smile, might as well pull the trigger, you know? <laughs> I'm sure I can figure it out. Just, just, just pull it, rolling dice. But uh, my, my point being is oh my I love Apple football because it captures the essence of the game, like I said earlier. It catches the ebbs and – football is ebb and flow, Okay. You're going to have the momentum for a little bit, and then the momentum's going to go away. Right. And APA does a phenomenal job of, of catching that. And I love APA because, I don't know, maybe because I was a lonely child or whatever. Uh, maybe because learned, your dad I learned how to play okay. by myself, and I learned how to see things in my mind with my imagination. I call it my mind's eye. So when I'm playing a game and I'm really into that game, 
and 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 I'm in that. I mean, really in the zone with my focus. I'm seeing the shit come alive. Excuse my language. I'm seeing stuff <laughs> come alive, man. It it is just it's just fun. It's right. just fun. Uh, you know, and and that question, and it's a valid, super valid question. And I know, folks, and this there's kind of I'm not saying the person who asked that, but there's I think there's often an undercurrent, like because you know everyone makes jokes about how long the app of basketball game plays. Oh, I'm I'm still still playing the game I started in '74, and I start I'm starting to feel some of that's creeping in toward app of football. It's like whoa. whoa, whoa. Uh, I went out to play.com, Keith Avalon, of course, the great. Uh, he's a big Apple guy. He was. Uh, I got to play him. I remember emailing him like in 2012 or 2013 because I was when I was running the Facebook page then, I was saying, well, what are some other games you like? Second season was perennial top favorite. And so I bought a copy, and I and, it, and you see he uses an 11 to 66 scheme for a lot of things, completely different engine, completely. And uh, this year, last year, I got to play him 69 Saints against 69 Steelers, first half with his app set, which he actually remembers like the results on the cards. He played that wow. game, app of football, so much. Uh, and, he, and, you know, and then we played the second half with second season. And I was having trouble because he's obviously the designer. He's a genius. He's a god. And he's going real fast. And I'm like, wow. But I get it. You've got matchups built into the charts and one of the things he does is that apparently you know an app of the doubles the 11 22 33 50, mm. 45, you know that's like automatically good in second season as i understood in that brief thing you know was it's different it's like you you, mm. you know but i i think that a lot of folks are are have looked at appa and they kind of you know maybe want to get away and and strata is a different engine um as i mentioned you know uh appa I like having defenders cards. I think they do matter. They matter to me psychologically. If I see Ray Nitschke or Jack Lambert or Chuck Howley, that card, that matters to me. I just want my guys there. And they will, there will be an influence there if they get that, you know, you know, or Richard Dent, you know, with that QS allocator or something like that. Uh, but I've collected them all. I mean, Fourth Street, you know, Brian Aldrich, he's got a he's got a a, a take on that. I mean, Apple informed a lot of design, you know, it really did. Uh, again, the Strat 50-50 method and, and defensive cars is a different animal, and people like to move the players. You could do that with Apple. I want to experiment. I think where I mentioned that front seven, I think you could do it might prolong the game too much, but I think you could do almost like a poker hand if you want to do like I'm going to run left, right, or center, and you can pick five defenders and – you know, I'm going to pick my five O guys or a couple of tight ends, and you can add a little nuance there where you do a point to point matchup, a mini index within that. I would probably make the game double, but I mean, you know, APA has that capacity to expand. Um, second season, Fourth Street, Inside Blitz, 5D20. I've, you know, I've got them all. Pay dirt, you know, data driven football. Ron Pizar is an extraordinarily fastidious designer. I just think that the APA flow as is as, as greg and dave you know said it's just it's so well replicated i you know I, it feels like it's the simplest game i honestly have trouble and i'm not you know maligning anyone there but i think the you know the simplicity of appa works for me you know it's like index index b index the cards are different it works it works. I mean, listen, man, you look at the final st stats, you know, of games you played. You've done that, Dave, and the games you've played, you compared it to actual box scores. You see a lot of similarities. I've done it with, you know, actual seasons. I'm always comparing. I mean, it comes out, you know, so close or at least, you know, to me, I always say I'm always in search of the perfect replay, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and the definitions changed over the years. OK, because, you know, things you know, change. I want, if I want it to be exactly like it happened, why would I want even play the exactly. game? No, I, yeah, you know what I mean? Ron says this all the time because people says, how accurate is it? And this and that, and oh, this didn't come out right. Ron's, like, accurate. Ron's always saying, once you roll the dice, it's all fictional. It's all different. And if you want to see exact, go to newspapers.com or go to YouTube and watch the game. Yeah, you know, yeah. you got to get something different. You're I, not I, I get... want, listen, if I have a running back that's a four point two guy per carry, you know, I want him to be a four point two or four point, you know, three, you know, what I mean, you know, I want to, but I don't have to have the same Super Bowl champion, you know. I mean, I, you know, it's always I, fun when you get to that, but you're up. It is. Right. I, I've, I've, I've hit it to where I've had the exact 
same Super Bowl matchup, and I've had it to where it's not even remotely close. And I, I've I, never – it's it's all fun. You know, I've never had – but one thing, Dave, I want to say about Jeff and what I think is his biggest uh, tribute to the game is – I've never seen anybody have as much access to so many people. I mean, pro ball players, you know, uh, all the interviews you've done, Jeff, over the years on your thing to where you're, I guess, because you're, you know, first class newspaper man. OK, but to be able to get all these, uh, you know, guys that you've interviewed over the years, I've always found that just incredible. Well, I take my hat off to you. Thank you, sir. Uh, you know, I mean, I think the real thing that in this fifth Apple life to me, you know, we go to Canton again, George Bazika of the Pro Football Research Association is going to give his opening talk again. And S.T. Patrick's going to be out there again talking matchup football. And uh, to me, it goes down to I, I was allowed to I was asked to speak at uh, Play.com about the future tabletop sports gaming, which, I, as I noted right off the bat anyone in that room could talk about that and they had talked about it but you know reaching out to me the next step is reaching out beyond the community you know pigskin dispatch darren hayes uh he's got a site where he talks about gaming and he had a strat interview and he had a keith avalone interview and i thought we should talk apple football and he graciously allowed that and he was fascinated by the fact like could you have like mel blunt and, and uh, carnell lake and rod woodson and and uh you know troy palomal in the same secondary yes you can because you've got sure. all individual cards mm. Yeah. So here i'm going to talk a little bit about accuracy this isn't because i haven't played the game but it's not gonna be about apple football did um for six years ago i did the 78 season in, in action pc football and the thing with limited amount of games and stuff is that you can you can get a result that looks skewed but really isn't i'm going to talk about the 78 kansas city chiefs who i think were four and 12 or three and 13 or they were terrible you know yes this is a long story and it's one of the reasons why we're doing this show gardner so <laughs> you done that's why i'm here you done? Okay. They were four and twelve. Right. So well, they were four, they were four and twelve. And as we're coming down the stretch, they were in the hunt for a wild card. Which, like, come on, you know, I'm not really familiar with you know the game and all that. How I, you know, not that I'm super, you know, finicky about accuracy, but seriously, this team's got you know Charles Emerson Winchester as their quarterback. You might live ever seen a picture of Mike Livingston? He had the the David Ogden Steyer's hair, as in it didn't really exist. <laughs> you know, the poor the poor guy had been, you know, Lenny Dawson's backup for a thousand years, and he finally gets yeah. his chance and can't can't do squat and he gets hurt. And so the Chiefs are contending. They're right, they're right there with the Raiders and the Broncos for that divisional title. And I start going, yeah. It, yeah start going through and was talking with our Red Sox fan. And he said, Ron, they lost six games by less than six points. Looking right yeah. And so it. when you go through and say, well, how could this game be accurate? If they're contending, you lose six games in the 16 game season by less than six points. Mm. Right. I got them to the playoffs. That was the, as I was telling Dave the other day, I had a walk off safety. Denver beat them. <laughs> On a walk off safety, we're at the gun, and Action PC Football lists success by percentage, which you know it's, it's you know RNG under the hood. And the one play I ran because Kansas City couldn't throw. In fact, they ran a single wing that year. Um, yeah, yeah, they did. Yeah, they ran a single wing. Not that I remember that firsthand, but I remember reading about that. I had a one percent chance of breaking a pitch play. For a touchdown, and he got tackled in the end zone, which Gardner has never let me forget. But you know, but when you look at that sort of thing for any football game, including you know, well, how could this happen? Because it is so limited for, especially when it comes to wins and losses. Yeah. So, have you two ever had a team that overperformed or underperformed? Oh yeah, I have. I, I've had numerous times and, and it's not a, a it's not a knock on uh, on the game right uh, you brought up a, a, a key point is the the point differentials of wins and losses it's it's misleading i'm like i said i'm doing a 76 season now it's just looking at you know the raiders uh, 
record, you know, during the, the prep phase. And you'd be shocked at how many games they've won by a point, two yeah. points. So I don't know if they're going to go uh, 13 and one on my tabletop. Right. You know, they've already lost the opener to Pittsburgh. I, I don't know if that's, if they're going to do that. And, and if they don't, I, I, it doesn't bother me any because in real life, Hell, they, they could have lost to the Bears that season in Soldiers Field. That you know, I think that was a two point game. There's so many, mm. you know. Well, the '76 Buccaneers, they lost a handful of games by yeah. mere points. Yeah, and they were leading in some of those and just couldn't couldn't get they it done. They could have yeah. legitimately beat Miami that year, right? Yeah, there was three games they almost won, so they could yeah. have been three and sure. eleven instead of zero and fourteen. Exactly. You know, have, yeah. Have, so, Jeff, I mean, did you get them a win? I got them three and eleven. Yeah. You got them three and eleven. No yeah. kidding. Yeah, yeah, and a lot of action. Now that was with the old cards, right, Jeff? Correct. Yeah, yeah, and it, which doesn't have the scrambles on the quarterbacks. But you want to you want to talk uncanny? Another of those uncanny moments. The first Buccaneers seventy six Buccaneers franchise regular season touchdown was a uh, uh, Danny Reese, I think it was, returned a, a fumble for a touchdown. In my replay, it was offense. It was the tight end Bob Moore returned a fumble for a touchdown. So you know, it's just when that takes over, it's just like. Okay, and now now I'm kind of watching, but uh, uh, if you go to our APA football handbook, and that that is a derivative of the APA, the Ed Zach uh, uh, baseball handbook, which mm -hmm. uh, which is why I'm here in Cooperstown because we're doing our second baseball tournament in the Baseball Hall of Fame, and we named it for Ed Zach who passed last year. Uh, when I heard about this book from uh, Pete Simonelli, because I dropped out at the time it was being sold, I said we need a football handbook. And if you in 2013, I did a scouting report every day for the top teams you know and bad teams this year i'm doing scouting reports for those what if teams like seven and seven eight and eight and i talk about the swing game it's games that you lost by seven or fewer points and that's right you how are you going to card that and that's again the beauty of the app of flexibility right. you know it's just you can get them just close enough that yes you can take them all the way it's i don't know about some other games about but putting it on paper can be a tricky thing and the simplicity of the app system to me continually delivers that ability to replicate that I mean, then, you, then too jeff is you got the nuances of uh uh of the card maker and of ownership you look look at sites you know i mean he hated the afl you know he wouldn't give out a he wouldn't give a five out to anybody you think with with, with, with john you know with john herson John, he he hates rookies, man. It's like I was I was talking to John the other day. I says, "How can you not give Sauce Gardner a five? That guy is an All Pro, you know. All pros get a five. And he says to me, he says, Greg, he's a rookie. I says, Yeah, you hate rookies, <laughs> you know, because he's a rookie. He won't give him a five. I'm thinking, you know, so you have that kind of stuff you're dealing with too. But you, biases, you know? yeah. but you don't want to have a type of game where, you know, let's talk about the, the, the Patriot Giants Super Bowl, where 99 times out of 100, the Patriots should have won oh, that yeah. Super Bowl. But you, but as the Giants fan, resident Giants fan here, the four, you still want to have, you know, a chance for the Giants to win that game, as unlikely as it is, because the Patriots really were probably the greatest team I ever saw. Yeah, they were, know, go, they were going in there, and so, but so, so let's talk about some of the nuance about that. That yes, the Patriots are going to win ninety nine times out of a hundred, but there is that that one time. Sure, I know, Ron. Time. When I played that game, I was telling you about the mini replay. The, right. the, the, the Patriots. I don't forget the final score. It's been a few years back, but they just pounded them. I mean, oh. it wasn't you know, it, it wasn't even close. Now, I played the 2007 Patriots in in, the, in 2014, the National Card Football League. Huge shout out to them, Jerry Zajac and the boys and Greg and Bobby Porter. Uh, they came up with a Skype method of play in 2013. Steve Bigfoot Myers. Oh, wow. Well before the pandemic. We have the video demo they did in yeah. Canton. I The following year, they did a global uh, tournament because Phil Malloy, great innovator, two-minute time. Oh, yeah. Back. Australia, he's a Niners fan. And uh, I took 2007 Patriots. I ended up in the final against Mike McCune and his 89 Niners. And I was broadcasting or, you know, live tweeting and live Facebooking. Swear to God, lost with the pa 27, 2007 Patriots. It's one of those games with, like, whoever has the ball last wins kind right. of thing. Mm -hmm. I kept I kept medium passing instead of Long the Moss. And everyone's saying, Long the Moss, LP Moss. 
and I, and that's you know you lost so it's bad coaching too user mm -hmm. error can also play in but uh yeah i mean you've got to that's right you've got to have that that's why the rare plays on the kickers you know you might have a guy who's a good long kicker but doesn't have the justin tucker field goal leg but a couple of rare plays will get it for you for a guy like a you know whoever name your guy mm -hmm. I just I had a hoot playing with Jerry and his fellows in that ACF league when I played with them that year. That was a that that that's Skype. It's a fun it's a fun way to play. You know, that was, I I enjoyed that. And Dave, didn't you have the rare play the Tom, with the Tom Dempsey rule that actually affected Tom Dempsey? <laughs> yeah, I had a rare. Yeah, Dempsey's kicking with the Bills right now. Yes, and they they were playing Pittsburgh Week One. I don't know if it was overtime or the end of the game, and I think it was overtime. And Dempsey was lining up for. a 32 yard field goal and I got a rare play. And and what I'm doing is I'm playing out all the rare plays. And then when I get to week two, I'm going to use, uh, I think it was Greg suggested, somebody suggested that you know, each team gets one rare play. Then you, you know, no, someone else said, said you roll a dice. And uh, if it's one to three offense calls a timeout and then four defense calls a timeout five, you go with a rare play and six, you get a different result. And I think that was neat. So yeah, I'm enjoying the rare plays, but I can see how they would get old. But anyway, on my rare play, I'm like, Oh no, it's a rare Dempsey's going to kick the winning field. Going to get a rare play. What is going to happen? And the rare play was uh, the defensive lineman got a piece of the ball, but it continued over the bar for a good field goal. And I was like, okay, it's good. You know? And I thought that was pretty but, neat. But you actually you had know? one, maybe it wasn't the Dempsey that the illegal shoe. You had a rare play. Oh, Dan, Danny white went back to punt for the Cowboys. And one of my first games that I ever played, and I got a rare play, and he had to come out of the game because he had an illegal shoe. So I had to bring in my backup punter. To, to Which is the for, Tom for that one play. Oh my yeah. yeah. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. So the rare plays, they can be kind of fun. They do. They add some to it. And All I, right. So, I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jeff. And, then, and again, you talk about that. You know, that came out in 1983, that big red board with those RPs. And now, you know, in the in, – that's translated over. You see rare plays in other games. Just saying. Apple was Apple has been consistently or had been consistently ahead of the curve. Uh, they look more like this now. But, you know, you look at the milestones. They came out just before the greatest game ever played. They came out with a big revision just when the Dolphins go undefeated. They come out with a revision just when and, and I think Strat might have done the same when they came out with the uh with the uh you know the sack totals in 82 but the, that's when Apple came out with the rare play so I mean this game has been influential and ahead of the curve now you can say there are some things you should do with it yeah. maybe and, and as Greg pointed out that was, that, was, that I mean John Herson has always been known he's a football guy he was Lombardi's caddy or something right so you know oh, I know it yeah oh, so yeah He's a football uh, guy. He's just going to, you know. All right, so we got some more questions for myself and also from the audience. Um, before I get to the, we had John on the show last year, and we were talking to him. And one of the things that I had been playing football at the time, and I said the thing preventing me from football is the cost. $120 for a season is a lot, and I understand you get every card and the whole bit. And we got talking, and he said they tried to go with less cards and teams on a team uh, players on a team sheet and didn't go over well yeah, and I, no. I i honestly had a hard time wrapping my head around this man if i could get a season for 60 bucks and have the key players on cards and have everybody else on the sheet i think that would be the way to go and that's where i was at the time mm -hmm. now that i've played the games and i have all these cards here i've kind of come over to team card i do like having everybody even the offensive linemen even the receivers who you don't really roll on their cards uh, yeah, cards and dice it says cards, right in cards and dice. And I do, now that I've played it, and yes, it's more expensive, so it means I'm going to have less seasons than I normally would. Uh, I do like having everybody. Once you get them in your for hand. For a second, Dave. You know, a guy like me, I, I, I play every game, okay? So, you know, it comes, breaks it down. It's, you know, pennies on a dollar, you know, when you, when you do the math and, you know, you yeah, the set's expensive, 140 bucks or whatever it may be. But when you play every game, you know, man, I'm getting my money's worth, you know. Well, that's what I've been saying is, is if I yeah. play the entire, I'm almost, I'm this close to finishing week one. So that's going to be 14 games, 78, yeah, right? Yeah, 14 games. Sure. And it's taken me a long time. So I'm, I'm at about three to four hours a game because, again, I'm in no hurry. And so if I'm at three to four hours a game times 14 games, what's that, 56 hours, if my math is correct? So if I spent 120 bucks in a season, 40 bucks in a game, it's 160. So at 
56 hours if i if am i getting three dollars an hour worth of enjoyment out of this project yeah, absolutely i would say at this point i'm getting I, my three I, I and if i play week should... two am i getting a dollar 50 out of it you know so that's how i'm breaking it down i think they hit the sweet spot now and, and they've tried a lot of different ways mm -hmm. but 50 cards is great i used to hate doing a replay of cards to where you wouldn't have a, a guy's card. I remember doing the eighty, uh, the 1993 replay. Mm -hmm. Well, Cunning, Randall Cunningham started the first four games for the Eagles. Well, he didn't even have a card. That's right. Okay. See, so now you don't have that. Now you got 50 cards in a, in, per team, but everybody that touched the ball, if it's a fumble recovery, if it's whatever it may be, has a card. So you never run across that issue of not having a card. The only time that it's clumsy is when you've got a guy that's played on multiple teams. And, I, and it always happens. I'm, I am I got the game set up. I'm playing it. Say it's a kick return. Okay, I'm using locators. And a guy name comes up. Where's his card? Ah, shoot. You know, he's not – He's on the other deck. He's yeah. not. He's on the other team. So now I got to go to Pro Football Reference, you know, yeah. where find was out it? where he goes, then go get the yeah. card out. That's the only thing that's clumsy about it. But, but the now card you have there. all the all of the things. And I hated the perforated sheets. Sometimes a card would tear. No. I, you know, I'm working my tail off at time. I don't have to come home and, you know, tear off the ends. I like having those nice, beautiful cards that I don't have to do nothing with. And now with the 50 per team, hey, they, they've answered that they've answered everything. And you know what? And again, if you go back to what we're doing with the uh the handbook on, on Facebook, uh I'm comparing a lot of times the original sets to the current sets. You know, the game came out with a base set of 30 players. They only started using the XFs in the 69 original sets. So now you could get four extra players and they were perforated, but they're per perforated better. And it was like four yeah. cards, not 50. In the 76 season, they added, they went to 32 base players and a fifth XF. And then they uh, stayed with that until 97, 98. As Greg mentioned, they didn't have an official set. It was in the Apple Journal. 99, they started the generic cards, which I mentioned. And it when you've played it that long, you're suddenly like, what's happening? You're you're missing, you know, it's like, oh, these guys didn't have stats. Yeah, but their point ratings matter. If you lose two four-point linemen. And you've got a tight index, 33 versus a 35 offense defense. Yeah, that's going to drop you an index. It does matter, you know. Sure uh, does. And, and also, when you look at these new sets now, 76 bucks. Again, you get the four quarterbacks. You get Hand Ratty. That's you right. get Larry Lawrence. You, do, you only got Parnell Dickinson and Steve Spurrier originally. Okay. And now if you're really fastidious, you want Larry Lawrence to get that five incompletions on your tabletop, you can do that or whatever sure. it was, you know. And I think it's a great honor to these guys. You know, it's like, hey, sure. I played. So it's it's got a collectability factor, I yeah, think. Yeah, I, I really think they've hit the sweet spot now. You know, I, the, I mean, the only thing that I could think of that would make it perfect is if they had, you know, how they have two cards for some players, you know, for, for if they're a returner, you know, that guy. Well, if a guy played on more than one team, maybe have yes. two cards. Because I'll tell you, you run into issues. You'll have one guy that's playing on one team that might have been a 4.1 running back. Okay, he goes to another team that say got a better offensive line or whatever the case may be. Now he's a 5.0 back. Okay, so now he's carded. When he's playing with the other team, yeah. it's skewed. Do you yeah. understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Was yeah. it? I think it was a Jack Rudney or somebody on the Chiefs line or somebody in the 60s. Uh, oh no! It was the guy. It was he was a Packer. Uh, I think he um, was the first player announced. Whoever the first player was announced in Super Bowl one, he went to the Chiefs or back and forth. But it really mattered because he went mid season and came back. And exactly like your point, it's like you got to go find him. But also that that really had a trajectory to his career. Well, you know, I tell you, it does when it comes to the production off the card. Because yeah. sometimes you'll. The, a player is carded for for one team, but when he goes to the other team, he might have performed way better or way worse. Right, and it's oh, the card's not not realistic to yeah. To where How many at. seasons do they need to redo to be current with? Because uh, seventy nine 
four seventy seasons. And, Was that uh, it? Four seventy seasons and a lot of the eighties, the nineties. Yeah. yeah, there's about there's uh, there's a, there's quite there's quite a few to go. But is that something that they're thinking about doing? Yeah, I mean, I know they'll get there eventually one day. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now here's a question from Jeff, and this is something that Ron and I talk about all the time. All right. And the question is, and we'll pose this out here. Uh, if you were asked to pitch Apple football to a newbie, how would you sell the game? And that falls on someone else who talked about the expense of the game. And I'm trying to find that comment there. So how would you guys pitch this game to a new person and, and, and factoring in that they're going to be paying $120 for a season? How would you guys, well, Jeff, we'll start with you. How, if you're going to pitch that to somebody, how would you pitch that? Uh, you know, this is, uh, well, I, I I know some people are big into the PDFs. I mean, certainly the printed cost is a big issue. But if you, and, and let's be cl clear, you know, I, I would never pitch a game to anyone that often because, frankly, the game that works for you may just not work for anybody. It mm -hmm. it matches my expectation of being able to put a full lineup on a table and be able to pull guys and have those points matter to have this third string. Uh, you know, left tackle, you know, pick up a squib kick on a kickoff and have all these cards right there and be able to manipulate those in a draft league or do whatever kinds of projects I want to do, you know, New York guys versus New Jersey guys, whatever. I don't know. Um, and, and be able to manipulate the teams to an extraordinary level of precision without having, say, a team card, which I totally get team cards are great. Um, I just like having all the individual players and the game is so infinitely malleable that you can make it sing, dance, do whatever you want to do with it because it's not so over codified to try to account for a really deeply realized vision, which I, I mean, I, the, today's football designers are fantastic and people are attacking the same set of stats. That's always the question. Mm -hmm. I, I just think it's that flexibility in terms of it's, it's a super simple game. It's a super accurate game. And you know, the cost analysis you did, I think is really the selling point too, is that you're going to, you can come up with so many projects with this. I mean, you can with a lot of games, but when you've got individual cards, I want to do a thing where you just like put them in a card shuffler and create a lineup. You know, if you want to do something whacked out like that, you, know, you can do that. So I think it's, it just really, if you're a fan of that kind of flexibility, that's a huge selling point to me. Okay. Greg, how about you? How would you pitch this game? Well, you know, it, it, it's like the, 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 the game book you look at is like, it's like the, the razor. Okay. And then the card sets are like the, the razor cartridges. Okay. And, you know, you buy a book and it'll, it'll last you for a long time, okay? Uh, and I know that it's pricey. I, I get that. Trust me. But it offers you the flexibility to play the game as simple or as intricate as you want to, to do it. And like I said, you know, for, for a guy like myself that replays every game, I get my money's worth out of it. OK, I, I but I, I'll tell you, I wouldn't buy it if I was only just playing a handful of games. I don't have money to throw around like that, you know, uh, but it's if you want a game that resembles pro football. OK, and captures the essence of the game, captures the ebbs and flows. Apple football does that. OK, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so. Hey, listen, it, it, it's still around. It's 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 survived the Madden, you know, era. You know, it's it's still relevant. And uh, it, I, th I actually think that it's growing. I mean, I, I, I truly believe it. Uh, guys like you, Dave, have uh, done a big part of it with this, the show that you have and you you broadcasting all the games that you're doing. Oh, even absolutely. though you're new to the game, you know, and I think that's a beauty in itself. Yes. You know, it, you got a new guy out there putting stuff out, it, hey, if he could do it, I could do it type thing, you know? So. I think this, I've had eight or ten people tell me they they picked up the football game in the last week since seeing me play on the channel. Yeah, see, here, you're so. an inspiration. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, yeah. It's, it's, it is, to me, it's still, it's the simplest game for the accuracy. That's that's yeah. really a quicker elevator pitch because you're 
I, and I understand there's narrative approaches that folks are doing and there's a lot of cool stuff. And Sean Cullinan's a guy who plays Apple League and second season league. You know, so he's a cross pollinator kind of guy. And, you know, it just, it's just going to hit any game's going to hit you a certain way. You know, it, it's worth investing, invest in the great teams of the past. One of the volumes there or a couple of Super Bowl sets like you just did. Take a dive. It may just not work for you. Mm-hmm. You know, it, that that's there is no right game for everyone. You know? Yeah. So, no, like Curtis says, the uh, the cards meticulously craft the cards and components, but they bring it to life, and it feels like a real football. I mean, for, you know, you know, sometimes when you play it. For a casual football fan, I mean, we talked about indexes and this and that and the other thing. I know that it's not necessarily, you know, super deep as far as you don't need to know what a Tampa two is to to enjoy the game. You don't need to be, you know, no. watching Gruden Camp to do that. Hmm. For someone who might be on the fence, who is, let's say, a casual fan, you know, so, how how would you approach the game? And and, and I'll, I'll let the three of you answer that. We'll start with our with the host. You know, for someone who isn't a super super football fan, what can Apple offer you that you may not that you might like? We'll start with Dave. Uh, I like the APA system. Okay, that's the big thing for me is I like APA hockey and I like APA baseball. I like the charts. A lot of people don't like charts. I happen to like the chart. I like the fact that I'm going to look at a card here, get a number, go to the chart, and I'm going to find out what happens. And in Ron, we talk about this all the time. I don't like making a ton of decisions in games. Mm-hmm. And so for me, I'll pick the play and let it ride, you know, kind of sort of. And it just – it just feels like a football game. Every game I play, no matter how good, how bad. And sometimes like, man, it's six, nothing at the half. This is a snoozer. And then I come back with a, you know, a, a Tom Dempsey block kick that cups over the bar to end the game. You know, Tampa Bay won their game against the giants. They drove it down and, and uh, the guy hit a kick that I didn't expect. Oh, Donnie, who hits a field goal. Who would have thought of Donnie would hit a field goal in 78 and he, and they beat the giants. So it's those moments there in this game, the basic game anyway, just it just clicked right off the bat because I, w- I was used to the hockey and the baseball going to the charts. This game just worked for me right out of the gate. And and I I thought it would be a lot more difficult than it was. And I've seen people play and keying on players and this and that. And then you got your master rules. And, and for me, I was like, never mind. I'm not spending 120 bucks in a season and be confused. And then it was APA 66er, you know? We, we had him on the show a couple weeks ago. He was playing the game and he just had the phone sitting over his shoulder. And I'm like, this looks ridiculously easy. And here's this guy playing it, not struggling. This, here's a run. And I'm like, I, I, I got to be, I got to try this. And I tried it and it was just blown away at how easy and how fun it was. That's and right. At first, uh, you know, you saw the video. I was intimidated by the cards. I was setting up completely wrong. I was going through, okay, is this guy a starter? No. Right. Is this guy a starter? No. And I, I was like, man, I'm going to be all day. And I was getting frustrated. And then I said, okay, how about if I separate offense and defense? Then I can find my starters and my kickers. And then now I know the symbols. And, like, I can set up a team now in five or ten minutes. Whereas before, I struggled with that. So I got off you know, trying on the wrong way. But for me, what you know, the game was never a problem. The setup for me was my drag and the sleigh, and I just went about it all the wrong way. But now I got that down. The game right out of the box played fun for me. Uh, I'm liking the master charts because it gives me a couple sure. different columns and different results. I do like the, the, how with the first and the second quarter sure. a little bit different for me. You know, uh, the rare plays have added a lot to me. Um, and I really, really do like when you get a fumble, there's – all these different columns for fumbles yep. and they're all in interceptions too. And they're all, as far as I can tell, they're all relative to where you are in the field. Exactly right. And exactly. it's like at the app of baseball. It's like you get, if it's first and second and you get a roll, that result is because it's first and second. Whereas if it's empty bases or bases loaded or man on second only, you're going to get a different result. So it, those fumbles are fine tuned to where you are in the field. And it took me a couple of games to pick up on that because I'm just thinking they're just generic ratings. I'm like, you know something? The way this was worded, it knows I'm inside my 10-yard line. Exactly right. And and that so for me, just everything is covered. So it's not like generic fumbles and generic interceptions. It's really all tuned to where you are in the field, and it just feels like you're in a game, and the game knows where you are and what's going on. And when it happens, 
it's just completely believable. It really is. And so for me, I'm getting a, a fantastic football experience. Not that I have it from other games. So let, let me just clarify that. I, I have played plenty of the football games that I've enjoyed immensely. Okay. And I'm adding this to that group of games that I enjoy immensely. So I like the upper charts. I like, I do like having all the cards and um, just how the, I, I'm going to go out on a limb. I think this is Apple's best game. I have the golf. I have the hockey. I have the baseball. Now I have the football. I think the football is their best game. That's the right answer. Yeah. So for me, Ron, that's kind of what I would say. All right. Well, you know, like they say, you get the game up and running in five minutes. I remember watching my friend Jeff there. He did a video on it. You know, I think he, he had a timer, if I remember correctly. You were trying to see if you could get it, read it, to, to start a game as a newbie in five minutes. And, what? you know, listen, you it's simple okay, oh, Can I learn. add one thing? The Apple football community has just kind of embraced me oh, so quickly. Great community. Uh, you know what I mean? Apple, and, the and, Apple community in general, just a great yeah. community. And let, let me say, there's a lot of communities out there. You know, the play community, the strat community, you know, payoff pitch community. And there's a, they're all really good, okay? This one, though, people just reached out to me. You know, and I reached out to Jeff. He's like, what can I get you? Okay, I'm Jeff. I got an old season. How, how do I play that? Here's a couple suggestions how to play old season, you know? And then, you know, Greg reached out to me, and, and you were giving me suggestions on things like that. And, you know, on Delphi, we were going back and forth on a few things. And, and someone reached out to me, too. He's like, hey, I got a couple seasons. Would you like to trade with me? You know, because I, I'm just not using them, and, and, you know, you're into the game. So we traded some seasons. And that's how I got, you know, 1984. I got 1984. I'm so excited, you know? And then someone – Reached out to me and he goes, um, hey Dave, I ordered two 1963 seasons by mistake. Would you like one? And he wow. sent me 1963. And I'm like, this is unbelievable. And then another guy reaches out on Facebook. He goes, would you like to borrow my 1979 season to play the Buccaneers? Nice. And he goes, it's an older season, and I'll send you the chart so you can play it. But he goes, I trust you that you'll take care of it and send it back to me. And so I have I've been playing 1979 off to the side. It's been amazing. People just like come out of everywhere and they're like. So nice, so yeah. nice about every, helping me out, you know, and you know whether it's with the videos or whatever. It, it was just amazing what happened with this game. It really was. It, it's it is it's a phenomenal community, uh, it, incredible community. It really is. So many times I've I, I I could sit here and tell stories after story after story of 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 kindness that has been bestowed on me from fellow Apple football or just Apple people in general. Uh, I always think of Johnny Cochran, you know, the great hall of famer and Jeff shakes his head. He, he, he good friend of Jeff's. Uh, he always says app is like a family and you, you go to your first convention, they'll make you feel right at home, man. I, I tell you, if you need to make that trek down to Alpharetta uh, for a convention, it's just a, it's just a really good time. To be sitting in the room, it, it's kind of slick when they do the baseball tournament and it kicks off and you hear all the dice go at once, yeah. you know. Oh, yeah. I what can what imagine do you got, that. Jeff? You know, 200 guys or whatever. You know, oh, that's you know, crazy, man. That's, that's <laughs> cool, you know. What, what yeah. did Greg Well say about football? He said it may not be the most popular game, but it's the loudest. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, yeah. to me, you know, in Apple, you know, baseball is king, and I and, and I'll be the first to acknowledge that. Well, but was, when it comes to face to face, that yeah. and I'm talking any game in the world, yep. nothing can compare with Apple football, not for the face to face yep. experience. Yeah, this game takes me, like I said, I'm between 45 minutes and an hour for a quarter to play. I know, and, and yeah, and uh. And you know something, it, it doesn't bother me in the least. You know, if someone said, oh, it's going to take you three to four hours to play this game. I, whoa. But I'm playing this now, and it's three or four hours of just, you know, it's kind of like, you know, Lord of the Rings is a three-hour movie. And it's like, it wasn't long enough. You know, I, I want more. And that's kind of how I look at it, you it's know. Like, and I play a game in like 75 minutes, you know. I, yeah, yeah. I, they, you know, it, it, it all varies. You know, you get I, the more you do I, it, the better you get. You know, I used the, the helper. I was showing you the pro football helper, and I played a game the other night offline myself, and I got a quarter in in thirty one minutes playing with the helper. So I was like, okay, that's uh, that's the way I'm gonna go. So I'll do that. You know, um, as as oh, why don't you guys finish answering Ron's question, and we'll get to my next point. Go ahead, Jeff. I, the key to me <clears throat> is um, 
No, I lost my train of thought now. Uh, remember when it came out is that it's, you know, we talked about how it's like you watch a game. This came out at a time when the NFL was just about to really explode. I had to go let my dog out. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure, sure, sure. That's good. Be a good doggy daddy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the, uh, it, it plays the way I think you talked about the casual fan. Right. That, the- I'm, not, I'm not worried about, geez, Joe Green is stunting around to the center, to the A gap or whatever. I, I don't, you know, I'm a casual fan. I want to run the ball. I want to pass the ball. Right. I maybe want to send my receiver. I want to send uh, Drew Pearson around end one time, you know, and I want, right. I want the thing I see on TV. I'm not watching the line play. I'm sorry. That's sacrilegious. Yeah. No, no, you're not the only one, but you know, when you see, when you see a price tag of, of, of what they charge, you know, it kind of goes, well, what does this game do? You know? And, and I think the point that, that you made and that Dave made is no, it really is. Call your run play, call your pass play, refer to the index, run the play, move on to the next play. And so, you're getting a lot for what you're paying for, and you don't need to be have a PhD in football That's right. in order to in order to enjoy it. I think that that was the point I was trying to, to get you guys to talk about was that it's not this, that the learning curve is not steep, and you don't need to be again. Oh no, you know, not at all. You, you know, you don't need an Ivy League education in football right. to to enjoy the game and. Uh, you know, I'll ask that question to Greg, who's probably played fifteen thousand games, right? No, <laughs> you know, so I don't know. I played a lot of games. I don't know the number. I wish I did know the number. It's, uh, it's quite a few. How many seasons have you redone? I, I've played twenty-five seasons. Oh my nice. goodness! So, so that's close to four or five thousand. Yeah, I man. That's it. And that doesn't cover all. That's just documented games. Okay. You know, I mean, yeah. I, I've played countless games that ain't documented. You know? Right. So, so we're talking about, you know. So, for a casual fan who doesn't sit there for 18 hours on Sunday and, and that, you know, talk, talk about why APA is a good game for that. Well, it's just real simple. If you, you know, you, you don't need to know nothing about football, but if you know a run play, if you know a pass play, you got the book right here, short pass, medium pass, long pass, you know, run not hard. Very, very simple. It's not like you're, you had to sit here and figure, oh, God, you know, they were in this formation and the defense is in, right. you know, this formation, you know. No, it's simple. You want to come out the gate and say, you know what, I want to run. I want to, I want to throw a short pass. Okay. Throw a short pass, you know. Greg, Greg and I'll ask this to, to Jeff while Dave is looking through the chat. Is there one team, good or bad, that really has surprised you from what you thought would happen with them? Jeez, I guess there's – well, it goes back, Ron, to the conversation we had about point differentials. Right. And this goes hand-in-hand hand with that. And I don't want to try to give you a bad answer, but there's, there's a lot of times to where I always said – how I grade a set is I go with the plus two, minus two. You know, if I want right. their record to be, I want it to be within plus or minus two of their actual record. Okay. Yeah, right. okay. To me, that's an acceptable level. There's sometimes I've had it to where it's four or five games. You know, yeah, I think on some cases I've had it worse yep. than that. Mm-hmm. It, you're playing a dice game, you know, it, right. and, and football is a limited season anyway, you know, so it's yep. like, you know, you have those things against you to where you're going to have some wonky stuff happen. You know, uh, I did. Greg Wells is always telling me to do like a, a what if type replay. All right. right. And I, I'm not wired that way. But so I said, well, the only way I could do a what if is I'll take the 82 season to strike short and season. Oh, and make it a full season. Okay. And I play the whole season. Okay. You know, and I had one of those. I don't know if you remember, Ron. You you go to the gas station, they give you the the schedule on that little oh, yeah. card that oh, you can yeah. put your wallet. You know, well, I had one from the '82 season. I right? don't I need to put gas in the car, Ron. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I would I use that, and I replayed the whole season, and it was wonderful. You know, so uh, and, but it, with that replay. The Saints won my Super Bowl. I mean, they were, you know. Wow. You, know, you have weird weird stuff happens, you know. That really That's is. That's great. 
study that one. That, that, oh, that's it, great. Is yeah. that up on BTL? Yeah, it's on BTL. It's on my. You can go to my website. Oh God, I will. I will. Set, and on my left hand side, that. I have Ogard sixty two. Yeah, replay. I'm gonna have to check and, that out. And they have. I have everything you want to see. All you could go is there. You click on it, and then you could click on the individual team. It's all hyperlinked, so you could see I, their I, stats. I, from, would their, you know, never have, posted. I would never have guessed it would have been the eighty two Saints. Well, yeah, it's no, crazy no. stuff happen, you know. And uh, hey, listen, that's what it makes it fun, you know. Okay, yeah. Jeff, top yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, ooh, I don't know. There's a, I, I go back to the 73 and 74 Vikings, but, um, I, I guess I'm surprised that they just, even the way they're carded, I mean, they've got the talent, but they just, even in that, 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 that format, they just couldn't, there's something that comes over. It's like you feel them seize up or something. They just, okay. the dice, no, overwhelming. The dice, no, yeah. the dice, no, man. Ooh. I mean, they should have obliterated. They could easily obliterated the 74 Steelers, but for that defense, I mean, that even with Zarb said, he sent me, you sent me the 74 Steelers of his to try. Mm -hmm. Either way, it's it's like on paper, they're hard to move, you mm -hmm. know, but, uh, but um, yeah, it's just those Vikings teams really become a, an issue sometimes. You know, what I always love is I have certain teams, I always say that hate my tabletop. Yeah. And I have some teams or players that love my tabletop. Okay. Like, and thank God, you know, I'm my idol. And still this day is Joe Namath. Okay. So Namath, he loves my tabletop. And now he's a, <laughs> that's good. He's a 50% passer, right? At the yeah. best times, that's what they were, the era. But people don't put enough credence in the timeliness of a role. OK, yeah. you could have you roll that 66 or you roll it, whatever the, the, the snake eyes. Or whatever. But I seems for me, the great players get their fortuitous role on the third and long on that critical oh, yes. crunch time thing. Yes. And that's what really separates. And for me, that's what makes it so fun is. Third and 22 for yeah, Stabler the other the, night, the, the 25 yard pass of, 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 of the timing. It's, you know, it, it doesn't get enough airtime, and that's what's so beautiful about this game. Is you know, you'll 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 hit it. You have a, a some guys will just hit that roll at the right yeah. time. Yeah, that's that makes it fun. That's what happened in Canton. We had uh, the final was uh, oh no, it was actually the semifinal. I think uh, twenty seventeen Eagles against twenty nineteen Chiefs. It was uh, Chuck Steinmetz, the Eagles against uh, Dave Weatherby, the Chiefs, and Mahomes. Man, I mean, he just lit the place up at exactly that right time. It's yeah. like no mods, no nothing. It's just now it's going to happen. He turns nice out. No, it was ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, when we talk about length of the game, I don't know if you guys read the latest uh, Sports Sim magazine from St. Patrick, yeah. but he had a good opening monologue. Yes, he did. Okay, and I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it, let me give you some of the highlights. Um, the, the the question I get asked a lot is, how long does it take the game to play? And he goes, well, I have a question for you. You know, are you going to play the most basic version, the advanced version or super advanced? Are you using dikes, facts, or a combination? How informed are you about the game? How long have you played the game? Are you skipping rules or doing it your way? You know, are you playing alone or with someone else? Will you be interrupted by the wife or the cat? Are you playing straight through? Are you taking breaks? And, boy, if that – I mean, he hit it on the head, hit it out of the park, variables. you know. How long does it take? Well, are you a fast player or a slow player? Do you know the game inside and out, or are you just learning? So when people are like, oh, it's taking you an hour to play a quarter of Apple football, it's like, well, yeah, I'm kind of just learning, yeah. and I'm taking my time picking plays, and I'm writing down every single play. So, yeah, it's taken a long time, but I did kind of jump into a game, and I did play a quarter in about a half hour the other day using the helper. So, I mean, again, between 30 minutes and, a, and an hour to play a quarter, that's where I am. But that's a big difference. So depending what I'm doing, and I thought it was a great, great opening article that he had because, again, it's I get where people are asking that question for. I get where they're coming from. They want an idea. You know, is this going to take eight hours? Is it a 20-minute game? But again, there's so many questions to ask. You know, are you a fast That's game player? Right. You... Yeah, yeah. I mean, absolutely. It's just like anything, fellas. The more you do something, the better you get at it. You know, oh, I mean, absolutely. Just, just, oh, just absolutely. Common sense, you know. And you know, if you you automate it, you know, I, I done replays like the 2011 replay I did. 
all dice. I mean, everything was was dice. Nothing automated. I've done a few replays, just all dice. Now, you know, they take they take longer. You know, but uh, you know, it's you know, you enjoy the time. I, I I enjoy the time, but I like playing a game and you know getting it done. And you know, I, I'd wake up when I was work. I'd wake up to go to work. I like at four thirty in the morning to get that. 45 minutes of rolling. So I get a half in, you know, get my mind started, you know? Yeah. So that's, yeah. You know, yeah. Do you do um, a game a day? Or how, uh, how, how many games? You I, I usually day? average two games a day, sometimes three, you know, I, uh, okay. It's great. Yeah. Like to, if the game is good and you're having fun time. Oh, absolutely. Matter. Yeah. That's I mean, I, I, I love Apple. I love Apple football. All right, so I got a bunch of rapid fire questions here for you guys. And anybody in the chat room has got a question about the game itself, now's the time to put it in. Okay, here's some of my questions. Um, are there? Can you do a QB sneak in this game, and how successful sure. are they? Okay. So you is do it, if you run, do it out of the box, you do an inside run. Yeah. But if you go to my site and look at uh, the opening post, and you go right there, it's the site criteria where I have my top 20 uh, searched items on my site. Uh Mark created a cute a quarterback sneak uh, chart that you could download for free right off my site. So oh, either nice. you either you run an inside play with the quarterback's card if you're just using the the boards, or if you want an actual quarterback sneak, you could go to my site ogard62.net opening post site criteria, find the QB card and download it. Just oh, fantastic. Manning. Phil Malloy's got one too, does he not? He does, and that's also on my site. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Now, what about the squib kick? Someone said I got one of those on my site too. I looked a at the squib kick, kick. but oh, it's a site. I went there and I it just said I'm I'm squib kicking, and that's all it said. And I couldn't find anything else beyond that, so I didn't know if that was a joke or no. That you was could find uh, look at the top, like I said, the opening post, the site criteria. Uh, there's a squib uh, kick table in there. Okay, um, it, on, on a kickoff, a guy returns it. I don't know, 25 yards, and then as a holding, it brings it back 10 yards. How, how do you score that? Is, is that a 25-yard well, return and a hold or, or a 15-yard? Well, usually, usually there's a, a, a asterisk there to where it, it curtails the returner to a 15-yard return. And then you're, then you're doing assessing the 10-yard penalty from there. And a lot of times now you're, 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 you're doing it to where you can't even go the full 10 yards because, you know, you're inside the 20 you know, right, to where yeah. you got to go half the distance, then even uh, land on an even, I mean, on an odd uh, ha a hash mark, you know. Okay. I had a play, I threw for a first down, and then there was a penalty, and it was unsportsmanlike on the offense. Right. What do I do with that? So, I, so is well, it, it's going to be a down? first, let's say the, the, it was a 12 yard pass play. Okay. But let's make it easy. The ball's at the 20, 12 yard pass play to the receiver. So you as the scorekeeper, you're going to log it as a 12-yard completion. Give it to the receiver. You're going to annotate a first down, okay, because it's a first down. But unsportsmanlike conduct's a dead ball foul, meaning it happened after the whistle. It's a dead, not during the act of play. So the first down counts, but now you're going to assess that 15-yard penalty back. So you're going to move it now to the 15-yard line, and the offense is going to have first and 10 from the 15-yard line. Okay. So uh, well, did, you, did you understand what I'm saying? Well, you, but, so the first down is at the 32. All right, let's let, uh, uh, so uh, I bring it. So, I, so bring it back to the 17. 17. Sorry. Okay. 17. okay. My, my, yeah. my 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 yeah. math was my, yeah. you know. And it, it would be it would be first and ten, not first and twenty five, right? It'd be first. It'd be first and ten because okay. you were awarded the first down, right? But so now it's a dead ball foul. You just move it back, and it's first down and ten. At the what seventeen yard line? Okay. Uh, when I get a result of pass twenty four th, which is obviously a, a a flag on a play, does that mean that it's it's completed for twenty four yards? And then I look to see yeah. what. The, okay. Yeah. Okay. I wasn't sure about that. On a punt, I was reading about rushing the punter. Okay. Okay. Um, and how some of the numbers may change. What is the downside to try to rush a punt? I know the upside is getting it blocked. Well, I guess the only downside you could say is you got to have an automatic fair catch on the back end of it. You can't have a return. Okay. So if you're saying, if you're using section two of the master game rules and you want to max, do a max punt rush. Okay. 
they'll tell you, all right, certain numbers, you need to decrease the punt by five yards and the returner cannot return it, but you have to roll to make sure that he didn't muff or fumble uh, okay. the punt, you know, okay. that he fielded it, okay. caught it correctly. Now, to clarify, on a punt, the receiving team is the defense, correct, on a punt. So if there's a fumble, I'm reading at any time during the punt, offense is still the kicking team and defense is the receiving team. Well, is that what I understand? <clears throat> this is one thing I don't like about these new cars, and, and, and Jeff could, could attest to it. Where the old cards, when you had the offensive and defensive lines, they would have on the offense, okay, you know, uh, you know, the, the defensive team is kicking it, you know, he, he he's the punter, okay? So it would your your PA would be on the defensive line. Now they just throw the, the coatings on the cards with no consideration for if it's an offensive or defensive um thing right but what i'm saying is is on a punt that if it says if there's a fumble and it's d, d you know whatever it is 10 d whatever it is uh defense would be the team with the ball on the punt correct yeah it doesn't it doesn't yeah the, it's it's different than a penalty where when the so penalty, penalty though yeah the, 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 team team remember, the, receiving at the start team, of the play the platoons at the start of the play all right, the team that's on offense and the team that's on defense, okay, is on on fumbles, they stay static. Okay. okay. The platoons, it's the platoon at the beginning of the play. On penalties, it's the team that's in possession of the ball. So if you have that's a change offense. of possession, okay. okay, then the defense becomes the offense if it's an interception. Okay. okay. But on a fumble, it's how it started the play. And I'm, I'm going to be, I'm curious because, you know, these are, these are NFL rules. I mean, so have you found in your experience that other games explain the penalties better? I, I found that there's a couple of games that I played that said, uh, you know, on a punt, the team punting is offense throughout the play and the team receiving is defense throughout the play. So any penalties or fumbles that are happened to the offense are the punt. And so it's kind of, it's consistent. They're Whereas in this case, yeah. penalties on the offense are on the receiving teams, but fumbles recovered by the offense are on the kicking team. So it's kind of penalties or, or, are quite quirky in a lot of games. So. Yeah, so just, that, that's just, just weird. Just remember that rule of thumb, though. You just that, that's the it's the key to remember that when it comes to fumbles, it's the platoon that started the, the start. play. Okay. Okay. The penalties it doesn't care if the ball changes hands 10 times during a crazy play. It's whoever's in possession of the ball is, the, the is considered the offense at that time. Okay. I got it. What What do we do about special teams? I mean, so if it, if it happens to be kicked to the up back and it's picked up by D six or D seven or O six or whatever, how do I do that without having years, to set up years a whole ago? Uh, and you could find it. I, it I apologize to keep saying it in my site, but I got so much stuff on there. It's, you know, it's been around for a long time. Years ago, I studied all the special teams and I broke it down by each different coverage unit and each return unit. And I mirrored the app of designation codes to reflect how they actually do it in pro football. So you could download, I have a one little cheat sheet on there that you could download all the codes, okay? And so if you're playing a game and it says 07 recovered a punt return, you could just look at it and say, okay, who is 07 on this punt return? And then it'll tell you the, the, pos the position, then you just find a player. Okay. Me, when I do replays, I, I create special team rosters. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And I, I mirrored off that. of that chart. So is it time consuming to do? Yeah. But I have special team rosters for every team. So when it comes up, all I got to do is look at it, see who was in there. And then I just make sure that that player was playing in, in that app, participated in that actual game. Okay. For, what do I do about this? What do I do about this? What, what do you got there, Dorset? Dorset. I got two, I got two Dorsets. What do, how do I know which one is for which? Well, you have FRK there. So if he recovers a fumble, 
If he, if he fumbles or he picks up a fumble, you're going to use that FRK for that and read from the K column for fumbles. Okay. If he's running his normal run play. I, I'm sure the card numbers are exactly got, the same. Yes, but he, he's also a breakaway back. So he's got those three K's in the R column. So on that card, bless you. So this is my fumble recovery right. only, and this would be my normal door set. That's card. exactly right. Okay, okay, that's Can what I, I wanted to know. Teams, real quick. Yeah. Sure. Lazy player. That's me. Uh, usually, I don't. I mean, Greg's method is is more exacting for sure. But oftentimes, if it's like a D six or an O six, I just you just so so just go to the bottom of our our stack of cards and just say, oh, here's a a two point lineman, and there's my O six. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> okay. On the newer cards. And I pulled out this special ah, for you. you That's, what I, was right digging. That's yeah. what I was digging out earlier when we started the show because I had it behind me. QS15. What is yeah. QS15? And yeah. and on this guy over here, he's got a QS2. Marty Lyons, yeah. So well, what, what are, is QS? For you to use uh, <clears throat> if you're using the allocation chart in the master game, okay? Yeah. That's where you plug in those numbers into the tele sheet, and what I did is, I hate to keep sounding like a broken record. You go to my site. I created a video specifically addressing the allocation. It's it's three videos. Yeah, I made that cover the entire process because it's a it's a time consuming process. Okay, uh, but it's a master game feature. Okay, okay, so it's just. But you could, you could, you go there, watch the video. It's so easy to learn. You know, for me, I'm a visual guy. It's a lot, lot easier. Right. So that's finding out maybe who sacked so the quarterback. Allocating the sacks. So basically, okay. so what, what that is, is just the QS 15 means he probably led the team in sacks. That what they do is they make you add up. Everyone has a sack, a QS code. You add those up and you come up with a range and then you start rolling against that range. So Gastineau takes up like 15 pieces of that range, whereas Lions takes up a small piece. Oh, I see. Okay. And then, it's it's really time. I don't like use. I won't. I don't use that no more because you you if you're adhering to the letter of the law, the player has to be in the game right. to get it. So you could be looking for a sack or an interception or or an individual that caught a reception, and you might have to roll ten times before you you found somebody that was actually in the game. That's so I don't do that. No, this that's why this old allocator was ideal because that never happened for the receivers and the any for interceptions. If they'd kept this kind of style and used it for for quarterback sacks, that would never happen because. You read across sooner or later, and you're going to find the guy's code here, whereas that allocator system that came out in 83, yeah. Okay. Comedy. Now, this guy here. Um, Matt Smell. If I can get that to, to focus in on me here. Um, he's got a V5-4. What yeah, is that? A, and what, he what was I, a great what, pass linebacker. He was, I tell you, in Jet history, Lance Smell, without question, is the best weak side linebacker they ever had. And he was he he was great at picking off passes, so he's rated correctly there. He's a he's a five in the pass defense and four against the run. So that's what V is. So it's pass and run. And yeah, now now and how run. does that how 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 would I use that number in my game? Well, if you look at your score sheet, you tally up all your eleven players on defense, and you look at their V ratings and just write them down. You know, like Lance Mel five four. You know, Mark Gasno. I don't. You have his card. He's probably straight fives. I, I I don't know what he was. There was nothing there actually. Okay, he's a five, so yeah, he's, right. he doesn't yeah. have a split rating. So, so for guys that have just one thing, and if you're using the split ratings, you would just duplicate it. You'd write a five and a five. Okay, mm -hmm. and guys like Lance Mel that actually have a split rating, then you would do a five and a four, and you tell it up for the for. Your eleven people. Oh, okay. So, so I would have a defensive pass rating and then a run pass rating. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. You might. Okay. It might be like defense might be thirty nine. Run might be thirty seven. Okay. Okay. No, I I get it now. I get it now. Okay. And see what, why this is beautiful. Why this is so so much better is I always say look at the Deion Sanders rule. He might not have never been a better shutdown, pure right. shutdown corner ever in the history of pro football, okay, than Deion Sanders. But he didn't like to tackle, okay? Yeah. So I always had a little problem with you give him straight five. Of course, he's an all-pro. Five, four, five, three. 
Now, five, if you, okay. now with the split rating, I guarantee you he don't have no five when it comes to the the, no. the run game. Yeah. Run I game. See. Okay. So that, but, so, but you have a choice. You have a choice. Okay. You can use – if you have a guy with a V rating, he's got a flat rating. So you can either use the straight rating or the yeah. V ratings. And, okay. And they, it, with the older sets, you only get the de defense – with the V rating and with the more current sets, you have them on the offense as well. So yeah, that's what Oh six Jeff, that they started with the offense. Oh, two or Oh, two thousand. Oh, two. Yeah. It was, I know it was the early two thousands. So yeah, it's, but they've tapered off too. On okay. this one here, Klecko, I got a FR zero. Does that mean that he can't oh, What that means is now, now this is critical. This is critical. F, that means that, it's a quick reference. If Joe Klecko recovered it, in your mind's eye, he picked up the ball and he was tackled immediately. Or he fell okay? If you go to pro football reference and you looked at fumble recoveries, if the player did not have a fumble recovery, he's not going to have FR number. That's why when Denny did these 76 cards that I'm using right now, that didn't exist yet. And I had a call with him and John. I said, you know, Mark's cards, you have a quick reference of if the guy actually recovered a fumble or not. And from there, they came out with those ratings. And I love that FRO because that's quick reference. Oh, yeah, he recovered it. He didn't return it for any yards. If just, he does not have a re FR on it, in your mind's eye, he just fell on the ball. And you go to pro football reference, it'll show that he never returned a fumble. And I think there's some W zeros they've done on occasion. Yeah, too. that there's means that's a intercepted, okay. no return. So now, if there's no FR rating, there. if there's no FR, can I assume that he's going to try to return it? No. If, 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 listen, it let me give you. Let me give you a, a, a <laughs> two answers. Yeah. If you're playing it, I don't want to say correctly because that's strictly, that's, strictly. <laughs> if you're playing like me and you're doing a replay. If he doesn't have an FR rating, that individual is not returning it because you could have some wacky results. You could have a lineman who never had a return have a 70-yard touchdown, okay? Right. If I don't want that, okay? So if he doesn't have an FR rating, that individual fell on the ball and he ain't advancing it. So if you what, want what, to return it, hey, it's your game. What would be <laughs> the difference, though, between no FR rating and FR zero? Well, it's, Isn't that it's the a same? Big difference. If it doesn't have it. If, if you look, if you look at, fumble. if you look at the fumble return number, okay, let me come to it. And you the, have, if he can't return the fumble, then ne neither can return the fumble. But no, correct? hold on. Let, let me. It's fumble return and block punt return. I mean, and block block kick return. Okay, so you could have a guy that has a fumble FRO number. Okay, that means okay, yeah, he recovered a fumble, but he didn't return. So you would stop there. But if he blocked, the, if there was a block kick and he recovered it, you would roll and you would look at that card's R number and you would go to the same column for the results. That's okay. why it's so critical that FR rating, because okay, it indicates that he can't return a fumble, so you're not going to have those crazy whacked out right. seventy five yard fumble recovery by I. I, I being a diehard Jet fan, I did an 86 replay with them years ago. And Kenny O'Brien ain't fleet-footed, okay? No. They used to call him Slowby, okay? <laughs> All right? And they say Kenny would take a sack because he didn't want to have anything interfere with his completion percentage, okay? He was one of the highest sack quarterbacks in, in, the, in the game. I was playing a game to where Kenny O'Brien recovered the fumble and re ran it, advanced it for a 73-yard touchdown. Yeah. Okay. Hey, it was within the framework of the rules, so it, it it counts. But is that actual? You know, app is supposed to be you know reflect real yeah. football. Okay. Okay. So, not so crazy yeah. stuff. So so fr zero means no. It means he recovered the football and he didn't advance no, it okay. at all, and you just move on. If he okay. does not have an fr rating, that person can. If you're doing it, if you want statistical accuracy. Treat it. He just fell on the ball. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. Um, all right. So that's that's all I got. Pat said, uh, ask about Jeff about the solo boards. The solo boards. Um, oh dear. 
<laughs> that that seems like uh, I had a solo little solo method that was like a. Okay. Uh, I don't have a solo board, do I? I wonder. Man, I might be totally forgetful. I did want to make a point, a couple of things, though. Special teams, uh, in the old days, they actually made you calculate the A, B, or C index to make that matter more up until okay. the last revision, just so. Okay. Do you guys play with weather at all? Any any weather? No? No, because everything, everything that transpired during the course of the season – Weather conditions, it's all baked uh, in. injuries, whatever. It's all factored in, baked, already baked into the cards. Although, I mean, you know, and you see, I mean, it's that's one of the great things about Apple. It's like that fun exercise. I mean, I've seen guys like everyone's going to be in the C index. And if it's like a monsoon, certainly second season has regional and seasonal weather. Yeah. Results, so, yeah. you know, I mean, people want it. And that's right, the so, and you could do it. And, 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 and also, not to keep saying this, <laughs> But on my site, yes. one of Phil's innovations, he has a little thing in there about weather. Yep. Okay. So you, you can, me personally, I don't because it's already baked into the cards. Okay. Okay. But if you want to do it to where, hey, listen, it's that I'm trying to remember the game. It was the, the, the I think it was 93 season, the Pats and the Jets. They played in a monsoon. I mean, yep. it was a three, I think a three nothing game or six three. It was, yeah. You know, so you could, you know. Or a fog bowl. Yeah, I just thought know. about that. Um, Curtis, if a two-line drop comes into play using the master game, how do you handle it if the result is better than the original result? Well, the only time I do it, like I said, I limit line drops. But I will have it on a key. So yeah. if it's a two-line drop on a key, and sometimes the two-line drop is bad for the defense – my my house rule is if it's a key, I always give the defense the benefit of the doubt to get the better result because they keyed correctly. They shouldn't be punished. Okay. I kind of play the opposite though. I figure like, oh well, they keyed, but this guy still kind of read it and kind of. And in the old and in the old game, if it's you're not even supposed to drop if it's not a game like on a run, you didn't even drop. So, mm. You know, I've had I've you could do it to where oh yeah, he was too amped up. You know, he yeah. had him keyed, he had him keyed, he missed it. You know, yeah. you could look at it different ways. You know. Okay. All right, my last two questions here, then we'll wrap this up. Um, one, you were talking about the popularity of the game, and then we were talking about them maybe remaking some of the seasons, like you know filling in the whole seventies and the eighties. Uh, do you think that's something that they will do? Do you think it's worth it? Do you think the popularity of Apple football is, is worth it to, to John at Apple to remake a season to sell? Yeah. Well, let me, let me, let me answer that with a question. We've been doing this for nearly two hours talking about Apple football. <laughs> I mean, you know, you know, I mean, it, it, it is, uh, yeah, there, 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 there is an interest in, and this is a niche community. OK, but it, it, it's getting it's even getting bigger. It will. It will. And you're I mean, look how excited you are with the 84 season, you know, which I think has been out of stock. It has been. Yeah. Out of stock. Everyone wants the 85 set. Everyone. Yeah. Everyone wants 77. Yeah. I wanted 79. Yeah. And the new boards. Yeah, it'll sell. OK. And the last question I got is something that you've already touched on. And Ron and I ask everybody that comes on the show. Um, what do you think the future of tabletop gaming is? I mean, it's an older community. We're getting older. Um, you know, video games have captured the young kids for, and they're, they're all, you know, now, now they're playing on their phones and the whole bit. What do you think the future of, of cards and dice is? And I'll start with you. Uh, well, Jeff, we'll start with you. Absolutely wonderful. Um, I've said this a lot and I said this in a couple videos in my talk at play. And, and ST's got a version of this where he says he wants a customer with a 30-year window. I say that we all know the lifespan of the cards and dice person, historically, at least in sports, has been, I played as a kid, I had real life, I dropped it, now I'm retired and I play my butt off. I say that, you know, and I emphasize the difference in the, in the scope of Euro games and, you know, the breadth of tabletop games, the Kickstarter games, Instagram games are all over the place. So people want cards and dice games and they want the beautiful cards and Apple cards fit into that because they've, they've, you know, he's really refined it back to where, you know, it needs to be quality wise. Um, I think you're going to get more mature folks. You're not going to get, you might get some kids, you know, we're always a niche. I, I was saying in my talk that even in 1984, we thought that was the golden age. I was the only kid in my school who played this stuff. Hmm. Only one. And I tried to introduce it to a guy who really likes sports. They wouldn't get into it. 
it's a mindset. Um, I think what's going to happen now is that this is where I put my money is that I want to see people who will mature out of digital and video, not totally, but uh, there will be two types of people. There are people who will you know, mature into, I want this immersive, tactile experience. And then you also got to go after the personas like the stat heads, the accountants, people who love numbers to manipulate that mm. outside of the fantasy league where you're actually doing something and making maybe not too many decisions, but you're making decisions. I think you know, the disposable income, it's not a bad word to say, I want to target an older audience because they're going to want those bookshelf games. They are collecting the hell out of these Euro games that are not cheap. You talk about price, look at the Kickstarter games. Now they're beautiful games, but one of the big knocks on Euro games is I play it once and I put it on the shelf. Where's the value in that? Let's go back yeah. to that app of value that that you so well stated. So that's I think the mature gamer is huge. And as I mentioned with Pigskin Dispatch, there's a massive market right now, never bigger for folks who are nostalgic for that, you know, pre-free agency sports. That's a huge untapped market that I try to tap, that I think that's where that's why we're in Cooperstown. I want to create content yeah. around that. And that's why we're going back to Canton. Two Halls of Fame in a year. I want people to hear rolling those dice. If we do Cooperstown bigger, we're going to be in a, an area where you're, you're going to see and hear people roll dice. These people don't know about these games because these are niche companies with mm -hmm. small, no marketing budget. I think yeah. there's huge upside. Ron, Ron, you always talk about, you know, in, in 10 years, people are going to want to play Tom Brady. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and Steph Curry in basketball and, and Aaron Judge in baseball. And yeah. And of course, you know, this, what you can do with APA is draft leagues. And so your fantasy team, you may not have drafted the full defenses, but let's say that, you know, Brady was your quarterback and Marshawn Lynch was your running back. Here, here's a game that you can do that you can play your fantasy team that won you a championship. Okay. Uh, yeah. And there's millions of people who do it with the legalized sports betting that we have. Yeah, there's more people paying attention to to, to that. Yeah, nostalgia will, will take effect of it. And again, I mean, we've gotten questions of, and obviously you can do this more with the computers because you can update it there, is what can I do that will give me an edge when I go to my virtual bookie about projection seasons and stuff? People are going to be playing those games to try to take an advantage over the house. Mm. Yeah, could be. Greg, what do you think? What is the? Well, I see it even in the restaurants I go to and things. They'll have a like like board night night. Okay, it's, it's everything cyclic, and you know, fellas, things in life they they come around, you know. And board games have made a a, a big big comeback, and I I think a lot of it has to do is, hey, listen, man, we're so plugged in. All right, you know, I mean, you're plugged in your phone, you're plugged in on this. You, you know, your job, everything's automated, everything, you're on the computer all the time. The board game gives you a break from that, takes you away from that, and gives you time to decompress, it's time to hand, just, just relax. And, and that's why I think that you're seeing a comeback in, in, with board games. And, uh, hey, listen, I, you know, none of us got a crystal ball, and none of us know what, you know, is it still going to be around? But uh, it's been pretty durable so far. That's right. You know, and, and uh, it's overcome a lot of stuff. You know, you, you, you fantasy, you know, from fantasy football and all, all that stuff to, to uh, you know, all the video games to everything. It's still around. You know, the game, you know, so. Yep. Justin says there are many more choices for games too. to Apple strat see as much demand with other games becoming popular. I, I, I would say, yeah, answer. I would say, yeah, because, you know, you know, Apple and strat are kind of the granddaddies of it all and the whole bit, but you know, you have, you know, the play company now who has a bunch of games. Uh, you know, Joe over at payoff pitch has got a fantastic baseball game. Grant finds is, is producing some football and hockey games that are fantastic for me. Um, I don't, play i don't order anything less from apro strat because of the other games i just you know incorporate strat all had, these strat had a record year in 2020 i'm sure yeah, all the other gaming yeah. companies did too i i like to play a lot of different games myself so for me i'm it's not stopping the growth for me because i just 
oh, oh good, a new game. I'm going to play it. <laughs> you know, yeah. and it doesn't mean that I'm going to stop playing anything else. It just means I have more games to play. I mean, App and Stroud are still going to be the gateways. In fact, over here at Cooperstown, uh, there's about seven APA baseball and about nine Strat baseball games right high on the shelf. So, I mean, it's going to be harder for those smaller companies maybe to get that distribution, but mm -hmm. they're more agile in that they're getting out to Dice Tower or whatever, you know. So there, there there's a, a trade off there that uh, mm -hmm. you know, certainly if you pick up APA, it's like, oh, you're going to hear other people say, yeah, I like that, but I play these blah blah blahs, and mm -hmm. it's like, oh, there now you're now you're hooked. Get your yep. stuff on Amazon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Ron says it all the time. Find it. Offer, you got to put your stuff where people find it. Okay. Yeah. Todd thinks the future might be Apago and Strat Max, you know, where you're playing on the computer or on, or on your phone, you know. I found that I, I had the Strat Max on the baseball for the phone. It worked fine for the most part. There's a couple of things that bugged me, but for the most part, it was okay. But I, I find that I'm just not a, a, a game player on my phone. Mm -hmm. yeah, and and it was it was a long enough game that I, I would play an inning or two and that was it, and and I'm kind of done. I just I, I don't I think like the that. demographics for that are considerably younger than us. Oh, absolutely, they're definitely for the younger kids. To and, get into and that, that and you, know. It, you know, for to get younger people to do these type of games and for them to realize that's it's important. And I'm it's also to see what be, happens with that. It's also going to be, I think, for Strat a good R and D. You know. People say they might, let's say, they want to play the 1969 baseball season over and over again, but they might find it's 2001 that does real. You're just throwing a number, you know, year out mm -hmm. there. You know, it may not be what we think it is. And so, you know, I'm sure that you know, I'm sure they know what APA goes numbers are as far as what people play for the baseball seasons and stuff. Yeah, you need to know what you're gonna how to target. Mm -hmm. So yeah, interesting. All right. Well, we want to thank. Jeff and Greg for coming on and Absolutely. talking about hey, it's been fun. with us. Right. Yeah, it's it's a game that I'm totally addicted to and playing the heck out of right now. And you know, my 78 season's going well. But I'm, I think I'm going to wrap up week one, and then I'm going to play either something else or maybe a, a different season. I definitely want to dive into the 84 season that I got. I still got my 76 bucks over there that I that I want to play in my 79 season. Go, which I'm, go download that special teams cheat sheet, you know, so you could have it for your, you know. Yeah, well, I will. That gonna, issue, you know. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go over to the site and find a few things that we talked yeah, you about. Got, there. Uh, there, there's a wealth of stuff there. Nice. All righty. Tips. I do have one real, real quick tip, if you don't mind. It goes back to your field position uh, point. Um, if you are, if anyone is inclined to go and dig up your old pre-master whiteboards, you'll notice that those uh, by field position, that's very. Uh, you have very as written results for fumbles and interceptions. You can apply the uh, newer books that have those W or F, you know, 65 and go to those locators based on the field position you're in. So if you were in a short pass between the opponents 10 and 30, you can look at a newer book and just apply those. Oh, nice. Yeah. So if you okay. are so inclined. Oh, that'd be good. Yeah, I'm going to have to check that out because I, I do want to play my 79 bucks. I'd love to, I'd love to have that remade, though. You know, so I can play. Yeah. I like, do like the newer charts. I like the newer cards, even in baseball. I like the newer cards and the whole bit. And the same with hockey. So anyway, all righty. So I want to thank you guys for coming on. So again, any final words, Greg, Jeff, any final words for you? No, I, Ron, it was a pleasure meeting you. And Dave, Absolutely. thank you for having me on the show. And Jeff, it's good to see an old friend, man. You know, I, yes, that, it, I, all praise to what you, Dave and Ron, have done for this hobby in the past five years. Uh I kind of wish I was episode 221 because that's my birthday, but we're so close. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I know Greg and I am always ready. Just email us and we'll walk you through the game and we'll demystify the things that are kind of weird. There are some weird codes and things, but once you get your hands on it, Steve Ryan there, former last year's Cooperstown champion, you know, walk yourself through it a bit and the penny will drop. You know, and it'll that's a hall cool. of famer, Steve Ryan. Man. That's right. Sure. Yeah. Right. yeah. All righty. So, Ron, me and you will wrap up the show. You guys stay with us. Don't sign off yet. But we just need to kind of wrap up the podcast part of the show. And uh, anybody that tuned in live tonight, thank you for tuning in. Is uh, we had some great guests on talking some Apple football. So anyway. All righty. So, Ron, this is episode 220, correct? Southeast Ohio. Southeast Ohio. We're talking to you tonight. So anyway, ways to get a hold of us. DigitalToDice.com is the website. 978-751-DICE is the text line. DigitalToDice at Yahoo.com. And over on Facebook, Facebook.com slash groups slash 
digital to dice. So, and again, thanks to our guests for coming on the show. And uh, hopefully we'll have you guys back on at some point and Absolutely. talk some more talk some more sports here. Uh, but we're going to sign off here. Again, guys, don't go anywhere, but we're going to stop the show. And again, thanks everybody that tuned in to episode 220. Good night, Bye-bye. everyone. <laughs>